is ABC Sports, home of the championship series. Lincoln, Nebraska, on a homecoming Saturday. Home where the Huskers have won 11 straight, and home where Eric Crouch looks for his comfort zone. Nebraska will no doubt find things more comfortable than a week ago in Norman, where mistakes, frustration, and a swarming Sooners defense took away the nation's top ranking. But this is Big Red Country, and the once again hungry Huskers look to keep in the running for the Big 12 title and a shot at the national championship. The 238th straight sellout at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska on a crisp November day. And no doubt this crowd will be in a frenzy when they find out what's happened today with Virginia Tech having lost to Miami just moments ago. Oklahoma's winning big. Nebraska would like another shot at them in the Big 12 championship game. Hi again, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler, and welcome to Lincoln, Nebraska. The fans are all ready to get behind their team again after suffering their first loss of the season in the game we did last week, the loss to Oklahoma. But for the third straight year, Kansas gets a Nebraska team coming off their first loss of the season. That's our matchup this afternoon. And, Bob, we've been around here three days. We remember a year ago when Texas beat Nebraska late in October, and then they ran the table, and they went 12-1. and one. They hung their heads a little bit last year at practice. I don't think we saw that this week. Well, I think because Nebraska has been ranked number one all season, they only fell to number four in the BCX rankings. Hello, America. If you want college playoffs, you got them. You lose from here on out, and you go back to square one. Nebraska has a chance to, to win today, but it's from here on out, it's just not winning. It's how you win. Florida State needs to do the same thing. Miami set the pace earlier. Nebraska's got to keep pace today. Some huge games. The Huskers are aware of that, and here they come. The Huskers and the Jayhawks coming up in a moment. Good job, Bob with Frank Solich, the head coach. Coach, we know a win is important, but how important is it for Nebraska to dominate this football team today? I think I think we need to look good. There's no question about it. We need to play four quarters of uh, very good football. I think we're playing a football team that's capable of moving the ball and putting points on the board, but we've got to show that we're a good, very good offensive, defensive, and special teams team today. Your offensive line is one of your strength. Will we see this offense lean on that offensive line a little bit yeah, more Yeah, we're going to come at them, Lynn, and see what all happens here. We're a very good power running football team, very good option team. That's our strength. That's what we're going to come at them with. Coach, thank you and all good right, luck. Thank you. Brad? All right, Swanee, there's Terry Allen, who faces the unenviable task of three years in a row having to face the Cornhuskers coming off their first loss of a season. In his fourth year now, and Lawrence... Five and seven last year. They come in four and four. They had a pretty good thing going until they ran into a buzzsaw on Texas Tech last week, 45-39, in a game they were in till the very last play. Nebraska won the toss and deferred. Chase Long set to kick long. You saw David Winbush and Termaine Fulton waiting on the other end. This is the longest uninterrupted series in college football. The 94th straight meeting of the Jayhawks and the Huskers were underway. Line drive from the four taken by Carl Neesmith. And Neesmith got across the 20 to about the 22-yard line. And here comes the Husker defense. And Kyle Vandenbosch talked about what this week has meant and how the Huskers are still in the thick of things. We're, uh, we're hungry again. Um, I mean, I can see it this week in practice. Um, we have that sense of urgency. We realize, you know, we still got a shot at this thing, but we really we have to do everything right. We can't play a bad quarter. We can't play a bad game. We can't play a bad down. We have to give it all every game. We need to go out and show people across the country that we still are a dominant team. A very focused defensive co-captain. First down, Kansas from its own 22-yard line. Dylan Smith is going to fake it, keep it, and go down for a loss. And it's Carlos Polk, who the Nebraska coaches said needed a big game. He's going to be sort of a spy on Dylan Smith, the quarterback, all day long. Dylan Smith had one of his best games ever in his career. Five touchdowns, tied a school record last week with his performance in a losing effort. It's a little streaky, runs hot and cold for the Kansas Jayhawks to have a chance today. Dylan Smith has got to show up big. His first carry lost three yards.
Comes up, checks off with his offensive line and drops back into the shotgun with a three wide receiver set. He'll keep it on the ground. Windbush going nowhere. No gain. Chile starting lineup, Kansas up front. Adenetto, the Smiths, Mark Owen, who hasn't allowed a sack all year, and Justin Hartwick. Winbush continues to move up the all-time career rushing charts. Norris, a big fullback hill, and Ross, the wideouts. And David Hurst is the tight end, and immediately a third and long situation for Kansas. Third down, 13 on their opening drive. Four wide receivers to this side of the field. Now one's going to go back in motion, and that's Winbush, the tailback. Empty backfield except Smith, who flips it out on a screen to Winbush, and Nebraska's got that red beautifully. Scott Shanley, the outside linebacker, holds his ground, and it's three and out immediately for Kansas. Impressive first defensive stand for the Black Shirts. It's what they call the defense here at Nebraska. Six career punt return, uh, career returns for a touchdown. One of those punt returns was last year that sparked Nebraska to a come-from-behind victory over Kansas. They trailed nine to nothing last year in Lawrence. Joey Pelfanio set to punt. Bobby Newcomb should have a great chance to return this or get excellent field position. Huskers have everybody up, and they almost got to it. He got the punt away, and it's going to tail out of bounds on the bounce as it hits at about the 44-yard line. So Eric Crouch will bring out the Nebraska offense. Crouch was brilliant for the first 15 minutes last week with a rushing touchdown and a pass as well to Davison. Part of 12 rushing scores on the year, 10 passing touchdowns, and lost only his fourth game as a starter in that setback to Oklahoma last week. To try and feature the tailbacks here today, Eric is a little banged up. Frank Solich said we'd like to get through the game without having Eric Crouch have to win the game for us. They open with a four wide receiver look, but it will be Alexander. And Alexander blasts straight ahead behind that offensive line that is one of the best in the country. The Chili's front wall vote. Fanotti's playing with a broken hand. Riola's a finalist for the Lombardi Award. Hochstein and Schwab. <laughs> Alexander and Miller. Matt Davison and Bobby Newcomb are the wide receivers and Tracy Wistrom is the tight end. Alexander carried that last one good for six yards. He's second in the Big 12 and rushing. And he's going to get it again. And he's got a big opening. Alexander on his way inside the 30 and out of the 27 yard line. Pick up the 23. You just talked about that offensive line, and this time the left side were Volk and Fanoti and Riola. Right's the left side. 58 is Volk. That's a nice block by the fullback. Uh, Riola gets a nice block. Fanoti gets a good one. Straight up to the inside, just as we thought. Uh, inside power rushing. Get the tailbacks involved this week. A better run than we saw all of last week against Oklahoma. This time. Kansas all over it. Nate Dwyer in on the stop. Chile's defensive group for Kansas looks like this. Holloman a little bit banged up. Dwyer probably the stalwart of that front three. And Denard Whitfield. Linebacking core. Murphy, Bowers, Marcus Rogers, their leading tacker, and Algie Atkinson. And the secondary, Davison, High, Neesmith, and Rowe. Neesmith, the headhunter back there from that safety position. Second down and nine, Wistrom in motion. Here's Alexander on the counter inside the 20, and he just carries Jayhawks with him down to about the 12-yard line. Well, we knew they were going to reestablish the power game. <laughs> they didn't it. know it would be quite this quickly. They, they got it inside. Alexander is six foot, 245 pounds. The tailback, the eye back. This kid, Alexander, won the state wrestling champion when he was a senior in the state of Missouri. He's the tailback, the eye back. How would you like to have a guy that big? We saw him out here yesterday, bulging muscles. He certainly has him. Here he goes again. Down to the two-yard line. Might have a first and goal. Neesmith finally dragged him down, and he's off to a five-carry, 54-yard start. When you, and you talk about the way to start a game. An offensive line loves for you to come out and run right behind them. One straight at us, let us far off the, the from behind the defense, let us far off the line of scrimmage. Fanoti is 77. Rayola is the center. But they love it when you just come out and just let us fire out and hit these guys. 
And they're going to bring the chains out. You see Finotti there with a big cast on his right hand. One of two players that broke a bone in his hand a week ago against Oklahoma. The other was on the defensive side. It is first and goal at the two yard line. There's that big club of Finotti's as if he needed one. 6'4", <laughs> six, four, six, four and 335 pounds. They, they say he may end up being the best there's ever been here, and there's been some great ones. He played a little bit last year, or else he'd be a redshirt freshman. He's a second-year sophomore. First and goal. Alexander got him close. Alexander diving, banging his way. Did he get there? Not quite. About the one-foot line, he finally landed. Carl Neesmith met him in the air. Neesmith with a nice hit in the air. Oh, Bob, Bob and Brad, everyone in Nebraska is tired of hearing about the loss to Oklahoma, but you have to learn from those mistakes. And one thing that the Nebraska offense never did against Oklahoma was get a possession inside the red zone. You see how well they do when they get there. This drive means a lot to them for a lot of reasons, but ball control in this first drive is important. Eric Crouch, quarterback sneak. No signal from the officials. Well, the two guys on the ends are going to call it. The two officials from the side, the lines judge and the head line Touchdown. are going to make the calls. The umpire standing right in the middle will never make it. They're going to make the calls. They're just not going to make them fast. Well, they're going to get in there until they get everybody <laughs> out of their line of sight in the seat. Crouch from less than a yard, and it's 6 nothing, and the balloons start to fly here on homecoming weekend. Sure, Eric says that's the that's the kind of carries I like. Absolutely. Maybe a one-yard carry for a touchdown. The heck with all that stuff out in the field. And that becomes his 13th rushing touchdown of the year. Josh Brown for the point after. And it's good. Barely. Barely good. Eric Crouch got in a crouch and got under the pile. 7-0 Cornhuskers in front. Just over five minutes elapsed. Nebraska dominant with seven rushes, no passes on a 56-yard touchdown march. Two minutes and 43 seconds. It took him. Alexander did most of the work. Eric Crouch went in from a yard behind the big hogs that are getting a breather on the sideline. Chase Long's kick is long. Neesmith from two yards deep. Neesmith Looking for an alley. Nice spin move. Got out across the 25-yard line. Good looking return by the free safety. Defensively for Nebraska. Here's how it looks up front. Kelsey, Jason Lohr, Lauren Kaiser still with that bad foot but playing. And Kyle Vandenbosch, who we already heard from. He's their leading sacker. Shanley, Polk, and Vedral in there today instead of Randy Stella, suspended for one game. Craver, Walker, Booker, and Irwin Sweeney are the secondary. Carlos Polk, there's a guy that'll give you a poke, about 260 pounds. He's already made one big stop for negative yardage on the opening drive. Smith's pressure, Polk almost had him, and now they do. Vandenbosch is there, and so is Shanley. Polk's the guy that forced him, and his buddies cleaned up. Nebraska's come out with something, uh, purpose in mind, both on offense and on defense. From behind the offense, take a look at the pass rush. Polk right up the center. He stirs it up, and the defensive line finishes it up. So again, a loss on the play. Kansas can't get a positive yard going here. Second down and 14. Smith, the quick three-step drop, now buys himself some time. On the run, he throws a strike. Big play. And a first down across the 30. To Harrison Hill, his favorite receiver, a pickup of 15. Big play. Dylan Smith, somebody had to make a play. Everything was going Nebraska's way. He scrambled, made something happen, a little improvisation here, improvisation. And a good catch by Hill. Smith had good numbers last year. A couple of touchdowns, created some fits, as Craig Bowl, the defensive coordinator, was telling us. He's the kind of guy that makes anybody nervous as a defender. Here's a little lob pass out to the 50. And into Nebraska territory goes J.T. Thompson. Good looking fade for about 17 yards. Well, and there was good coverage. The only problem was Craver never saw the ball. Here they are down here. He's just going to go up the field, and they're covered. He's covered as tight as you can be covered. But when the ball's thrown, the one guy sees it, and the other guy doesn't. And that's the offensive man. Well, Kansas. Has something going. They move to the Nebraska 47-yard line with another first down. 
Cornhusker show blitz. And Polk will come with one, but it's Smith on a quarterback draw straight up the middle inside the 45 to the 44, and we check in with John Saunders in New York. John? Brad, last year Virginia Tech played for a national championship. It is not going to happen this year because a five-game losing streak to the Hokies by Miami is over Ken Dorsey, 80 yards to Santana Moss. He had 154 yards receiving and two touchdowns, and Miami clobbers Virginia Tech 41-21. Brad? Well, Santana Moss said before that game, big-time players make big-time plays in big games. We talked about it last week. That's what Oklahoma did against Nebraska. Santana answered the call today, and think, uh, Virginia Tech falls from the undefeated. You think they got Miami's attention by dropping the BCS poll, dropping them to five down below a Florida State, who they beat earlier in the season? Absolutely. Winbush getting up on his own, caught up in the pile, throwing a block inside, and you see his leg get tangled up underneath Polk. So the leading rusher for Kansas limps off and that won't help their cause. Reggie Duncan will come in to take his spot and those two guys from the very same high school and David obviously upset he keeps moving up the Kansas all time rushing records and he might know that his day is done the way through that helmet Yeah, and you can normally protect yourself when you're doing the things that you normally do that is running the ball maybe catching it but when you're in there blocking and you get pushed around and everybody falls on you then you don't you lose control so number 22 out number 11 in from the shotgun Smith wide open on a crossing pattern inside the 45 Roger Ross and he goes down to the 35 yard line a pickup of nine one of the things that Terry Allen the head coach of the Jayhawks told us earlier in the week that he wanted to do was get the slot receivers and mainly Ross isolated on the strong safety or the slot coverage guy and that is uh, Ross right there running around on uh, gross Hill and Ross and Fulton all extremely good as far as average per catch a couple of them in the 18 yard category that one got him a first down at the 35 Smith's going to loft it out for Hill nice adjustment by Hill but a better play by the secondary is coming over was Troy Watchorn who's got a tremendous nose for the football you, you got that exactly right Watchorn normally uh, plays in the center of the field has got five interceptions that leads it Let's go ahead right down here. He's going to run. Watch on is here. Watch as he's going to come over late and help make this play. Smith just throws it up. Go to try and get a jump ball. And watch on comes over and says, hey, I'm helping my corner, knocking it out of there. Got his helmet in there and forces a second down and 10. Eighth play of the Jayhawk drive. Blitz coming. Smith's in trouble. Now he throws a deep crossing pattern incomplete. Didn't get enough on it. The intended receiver was Termaine Fulton. Coming up next Saturday, ABC Sports showcases some critical matchups. We head down the stretch in college football. Most of you'll see Josh Heifel and top-ranked Oklahoma take on Texas A&M. Other regional action from the Big Ten, either Penn State and Michigan or Purdue and Michigan State. That's next Saturday at a special time, 1 o'clock Eastern, 12 Central, here on ABC. Check your local listings for the details or get all your games on pay-per-view. Third and ten. Reggie Duncan split out as a fourth wide receiver to the bottom of your screen. Smith got rid of it to Hill. Hill dropped the ball. Fumble picked up by Nebraska. Erwin Sweeney's got it. And so much for the Jayhawk drive. It's tough to beat a top-ranked team, especially on their home turf, if you turn the football over. Nice crossing route. Juan Gross knocks it loose. That knocked it loose. Sweeney tries to pick it up. He sees touchdown, but he can't keep his feet. <laughs> he had some red shirts there that were going to kind of escort him down the sideline. So that takes a possible scoring drive away from Kansas, gives it back to the Huskers offense at their own 47-yard line. Here's Buckhalter. Penalty markers down and then a holding call in the backfield. And Buckhalter took it into Kansas territory. And they'll back it up. Buckhalter in for he's Alexander, he's he's who was brilliant on that opening drive. Alexander did most of the work to get him their touchdown. And Buck Halter, one of three Nebraska backs, when you include Eric Crouch, that are in the 2,000 yard club. Mm -hmm. 
Frank Solich, not only the head coach, but also the offensive coordinator, calls all the plays. Holding. Randy Crystal's microphone giving out a little bit. There's the 6,000-yard backfield. It's never happened in the Big 12 before Eric Crouch went over the 2,000 yard mark last week with a hundred yard effort <laughs> and you see the numbers of those three guys <laughs> crouch is the quarterback and he's almost right up with those guys as far as rushing yards and he's got more rushing touchdowns than either of the eye backs these are different eye backs in some of the past years they'll both admit that they're not as flashy not as fast as some of the other guys that have been there but as Bob said earlier they weigh 240 yeah, pounds they are bigger, be a little bit different bigger. here's the option there's a pitch Buck Alter made a man through a stiff arm and got across the 40 to the 43 yard line. Another 10 yard pickup. Crouch did a nice job of coming down the line and forcing the defensive man to take him and thereby pitching the football. Take a look at this. Goes right at the defensive linebacker, jumps inside. I think there's, a, I don't think there's a foul there. So out to the 44 yard line. Second down and 13. So they got some of the holding call back. Both wide receivers to the top of your screen. They've yet to throw a pass. They still won't. It's Buckholder straight ahead. And he's back across the original line of scrimmage as we check in with Swanee on uh, the condition of David Winbush. Well, Brad, as Nebraska's running game rolls on, Kansas running game is taking a hit. David Winbush has a sprained right ankle, and that's a big hit because he is a leading rusher and also a big hit to their passing game as he is the third number three on the pass reception chart. Sixth all time in Kansas rushing, and there's been some great running backs in Kansas, oh, too. Have there, ever. About Gail Sears. Yeah, John Riggins and others. It's all Nebraska so far in this one. 71 rushing yards. Now they will throw. Wide open is Bobby Newcomb. That's something they couldn't shake him loose against Oklahoma last week. But Crouch throws a rocket 17 yards to Bobby and picks up the first down. Crouch, outstanding uh, runner, can throw when he wants to. Here's a Newcomb down here. He's just going to go down and run a little curl route. But um, what, what Crouch is best is when he is running the football, get the option game going, and then you work in the play action. And he had all kinds of time, of course, to throw that one thanks to that play action. First down at the 35. They go back to the eye backfield and the toss to Buckhalter. Buckhalter, great blocking off the right side, and he blasts his way for seven or eight more. Boy, they are coming off the ball, the big eaters. <laughs> well, we talked about that offensive line. Hochstein is 55 right here. He's going to pull. Watch 77. That's uh, Finotti. Watch as they come around. Right here. Look at the seam they have right in there. That's beautiful. That's the way you draw it up. Second down at two. Nebraska leading by a touchdown. Crouch will keep it. He's got a big alley. Eric Crouch. First and goal, Nebraska. At the Kansas five. 21 yards for Crouch. Wanted to score when you get inside that 10 yard line. Any back, whether it's a quarterback or a running back, likes to get in the end zone. Boy, he has got some quicks when he decides to make that move. He faked the pitch, had the same defensive uh, linebacker out there as he had the other time when he did pitch the ball. That time he kept it. Nebraska first and goal at the Kansas five. Two tight end set. Crouch will keep it. Got to about the two, maybe down to the one. Kareem High hit him low. And it's second and goal. Impressive Nebraska coming out, doing what they wanted to do, and that is run right at this Kansas uh, defense that shut them out, as you mentioned earlier, in the first half of last year's game. Two fullbacks in there, Willie Miller and Davies. Buckholder the tailback, second and goal. Bangs his way down close. Not quite inside the one, though. Marcus Rogers made the tackle. 
And it'll bring up third and goal. So Kansas trying to hold on and force a field goal. But I think Nebraska is going to just keep ramming this. This is two down territory. I right think here. you're right. This is a what they've run uh, two already, and they I think it's a four down area. They're going to run two more if they don't get it in here. Maybe watch for Willie Miller, the fullback. He's a load. He's right behind Crouch. Third and goal, Nebraska. Crouch, quarterback sneak. Well, they had to come flying in from both sides to see where he landed the last time and gave us a late touchdown call. Let's it's, let him unpile. Yeah, it's the it's this guy here and the other one right across <laughs> there that are digging in there. Touchdown. There see? he goes again. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> see, they can't see. You block them off from the side. We got to get those players from the side out of the way. <laughs> Eric Crouch's second one-yard touchdown. I don't remember that happening in one game, much less twice in the same quarter. Yeah, how can you say? There's no way that a line judge coming in from either side can tell if he crossed that line. And sometimes it's, he's right at the foot of the umpire who's right in the end zone. Line judge Kelly Dieterding came in to make the call, and now it's Josh Brown for the point after. So Nebraska is going to turn a fumble recovery into seven points. Eric Crouch has got both scores on the ground. 14 nothing Cornhuskers. <laughs> Trying to weave his way through traffic and got out to about the 18 yard line. <laughs> Terry Allen shoots it out as Winbush retaped and ready to come back out, apparently. And he has definitely retaped. He's got the spats working there. Right <laughs> Going to give it a try. That's good. He's a, he's a big time player, Winbush. Looking to become the fifth player in school history to lead the team in rushing for three straight years. And as I said, came in with uh, almost 2,500 yards, but so far the yards have been tough to come by for Kansas. And the starting field position has been tremendous for Nebraska and not so good for KU. Lost the motion man on first down. Smith from the shotgun. Play fake to Winbush and in trouble and down he goes and it's Vandenbosch who just Vandenboshed him. That's the second sack already for Vandenbosch. We told you he was a pretty focused defensive captain and he's showing it. Yeah, and that's his sixth sack on the year. There was actually somebody open downfield if Vandenbosch hadn't have taken the inside track and they just took the inside on uh, Ottonetto, the left tackle. That's where you get uh, your, your defensive backs thinking the defensive lines and hey, thanks for saving me on that one. That group trying to keep Vandenbosch off their quarterback. Hasn't been easy. Second down and 20. Winbush in motion. They fake it to him on the end of the round and Smith fires to Hill. Out across the 20. And it's going to bring up third down and about six. Good play by Smith. Good coverage uh, downfield. That's just good execution. Throwing out of your own end zone. You got to have confidence in your offensive line and your quarterback uh, to do that. Steve Allen, the uh, I mean, Terry Allen, Steve Allen. <laughs> I knew I was going to do that. <laughs> Terry Allen uh, was a quarterback at Northern Iowa. Much of his staff from you and I as well. Here's the fade again. Hill makes a nice adjustment and couldn't hold on. Almost made a great catch. Just couldn't stay with it. Keo Craver kind of helped him cough that football up. And I think he would have had a first down if Hill could have come down with this ball. They must have seen something in the films where Craver does not react well to these little fade routes because they would have thrown the ball up there three times. That time he knocked it away. Bobby Newcomb has a 17-yard pass reception in this game which is almost more yardage than the five catches he had last week netted him. but again if he gets his hands on this punt you can hold your breath he's just been waiting for a big play he's going to get a handle on this one Bobby from the 47 Newcomb inside the Kansas 40 nice return of 14 and it sets Nebraska up in beautiful shape offensively again. And so far, they just keep grinding it out. They lead 14-0. Nine left in the first quarter. And our first and ten presented by Quest. And that first down line is the 28 of Kansas. 
Two very similar drives in length and time of possession for the Cornhuskers so far. This one might be a quicker score. Alexander a stiff arm as he goes all the way down to the 16. Flags fly in. We may have a face mask call. Quincy Rowe trying to bring him down. He's just been a big ball of fire so far in this first quarter. A pickup of 18. Well, last week, Eric Crouch touched the ball 50 times. He threw it 27. He rushed it 23. Today, it's back to the Ibacks, Alexander and Buckholder. And running behind that offensive line, doing what they do best. There's the face mask. It was incidental by Rowe. Just got it in there and tried to get it out as fast as he could. So with the penalty, it'll move it down just outside the 10-yard line. Alexander's been the workhorse, and as I said, the two scoring drives, 56 and then 53. First and 10. Eric Crouch, late pitch. Alexander. Oh, oh, oh. Two head-to-head -head hit by Marcus Rogers, or he would have scored. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Rogers. You're in my neighborhood. <laughs> Uh, the middle linebacker, number eight, Rodgers leads this team in tackles. Got some speed, gets over there. Ardell Wiegand, the defensive coordinator, was telling us a little bit, we got some speed, we're not real physical, but we can run. The other thing he said is, you know, playing Nebraska, you got to have two defensive game plans, one for the first half and one for the second half because they adjust so well at halftime. Second down, just outside the three. Crouch, going to keep it and score it. Touchdown, Nebraska. Well, that one was simple. And Eric Crouch has scored three times on the ground in this first quarter. And again, it was Alexander that did most of the work. Three possessions, three scores. Great field position to start with for Nebraska. It's about to be 21 to nothing. Josh Brown for the point after. And it's up and good. So Bobby Newcomb's punt return gave him great field position. Alexander rumbled down the sideline, the face mask penalty. Alexander one more time and then crouched from three. Here's how it looks. From behind the defense, Finotti just gets a little push on Neesmith, number five right there. It's enough for Crouch to get in. 58 is Volk, the uh, left tackle. Bob, what we're seeing here is a very professional football team. Nebraska's coming in saying, you know, we played a bad game last week. We got away from our base offense. And on the sideline, you can sense it. They're very focused. They came in and said, we're just going to do the things that we're known for. Nothing fancy. Then when we want to go up top and pitch the ball, it should open up. When you were talking to uh, Frank Sullivan before the game, and he, <laughs> you asked him that question about the other teams around, you know, you didn't feel like you have to win and win kind of big. He didn't say yes, but I got the feeling. He didn't say no either. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the key. <laughs> yeah. So Crouch has 15 rushing touchdowns now with the three included today. Chase Long's kick is going to hit the end zone. Neesmith wanted to wait for it there and see if it would go out of bounds. It didn't, so Kansas will work from the 20. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Morgan Stanley Dean Witter. Move your money, get well connected. And National Car Rental. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. It is homecoming in Lincoln, Nebraska. And you have to go all the way back to 1968, the last time they lost a homecoming game. That's KU no problem so far, I'll tell you that much. Well, they've beaten KU 31 times in a row, and they haven't lost back-to-back -back regular season games in 24 years, so it doesn't look good for the Jayhawks. Reggie Duncan in a tailback. They give it to him. Duncan found himself a little room. Got about six yards, tough yards. Joe Walker holding on. As Duncan now is taking over for Winbush, who's got the bad ankle. And earlier we asked you in their history, Kansas has had two two-time All-Americans. Can you name them? I can name one. Gail Sayers. Should be a quarterback in there, too. Old number 21. John Hadle. 
Played against Halo when he was with the San Diego Chargers. What a good guy John is. Second down and three. Every time I say Winbush is out and Duncan's in, Winbush is back in there. But he didn't get much. Justin Smith made the stop. This is a different. Uh, this is a different offense than the one that Nebraska faced last week. And talked to some of the defensive coaches, in particular Craig Bowl, the uh, coordinator. He couldn't say enough about Josh Heupel, yeah. the quarterback for uh, for Oklahoma. He says, "I got a new respect." And talking to the Kansas coaches before the game, they played Oklahoma. They were very high on this young kid, uh, Heupel. Smith. Threw it across the middle. David Hurst, the tight end, probably should have had it, but he would not have had a first down anyway. And Vandenbosch, one of those guys that had a tremendous amount of respect for Heupel as well, said nobody's played that well against us at quarterback that I can remember. Yeah. But he goes off with his arm raised because he's raising havoc on number four well, right now. It can't get any better uh, for Nebraska. You've had the ball three times offensively and scored. Three times you've been on defense, it's been three and out. And one of those was a fumble. And Virginia Tech lost today. That's good too for the Huskers. Calpanio to punt. High kick. Dual return man. Walker waits on it and lets it bounce. Whoop! Did it hit a Husker? Kansas thinks so and they cover it. Walker was hollering, get out of the way, get out of the way. And uh, his, one of his teammates didn't hear him because he was still blocking. Grixby was down there, didn't hear him, but it did not touch him. You saw the official immediately give the first down sign for Nebraska. Unless they've changed their mind, but at one point they definitely said Nebraska football. And here comes the Cornhuskers offense. We'll get another look at that ball coming down. Walker trying to clear out. There's Grixby. He's unaware that the ball's about to hit him in the rear end, and it did miss his foot. Not by much, but it missed it. Top by Nebraska on the foot. Return recovered by Kansas. Whoa. First down. I take it back. Whoa. And they must, right. have, must have claimed it hit him before that end of that shot that we saw. It's tough for the return man when you're sitting there and you want them to move away. You don't want to get too close to the ball yourself because that ball will take some odd bounces. But you have to get close enough and take a chance in situations like that to protect your teammate who has his back to the ball. When not, a, not only are you hollering, but you're also waving your arms in case they can't hear you. I don't think it already hit him. It's hard to see, but. Well, it was a good job by Kansas to be aware and cover it up even if it wasn't. The fact that he hit him, they made it look like it enough. Obviously, officials don't have the luxury of replay that we have, but quite frankly, we don't know if we can see it either. And Frank Solich is saying that as well. He Here's just, another look. Frank's just asking. <laughs> just asking. <laughs> I don't know. It's hard to tell. If it hit the foot and bounced hard to the right, yeah. it would be easy. But that just didn't yeah. seem like it was affected at and, all. And you got it. You got it. The officials were right there, so you got to go with them. You got to think they saw it. I still think it missed him, but Kansas has the football. First down, long fade. Nice catch. JT Thompson looking into the sun and he drags it down to pick up a 23. But what they're doing, they've got the strength of this Jayhawk offense and the wide receivers and the quarterback. What they're doing is they're just throwing the ball out here at single coverage. He's just going to go straight down the field. And all you've got is one on one and the receiver does a nice job of playing the ball Swanee and the defensive man doesn't. Absolutely. And the defense is more than likely going to be in man coverage on first down based on what Craig Bowl told us and I'll let you in on that after this play. Sweeney and Craver neither corner has turned around much today for Nebraska defensively. Here's Smith throws one complete down to the 20 yard line. Termaine Fulton, and that's going to bring the first quarter to a close. First quarter dominated by Nebraska, much like a week ago. They've got three Eric Crouch touchdown runs. They lead by 21. He's here. Take a look at the bottom here. Right there, you see him say, get away, get away. Now watch down here, right there. That's pretty close. You can't tell for sure from that angle whether it hit the foot or not, but it was pretty close, and the officials are usually right on it. Dylan Smith is 8 of 12 for 75 yards. Got a second and eight now just outside the Cornhusker 20. He'll keep it on a quarterback draw. Takes it outside and gets about two yards. 
Well, Brad, I started to tell you guys about Craig Bowl and why Kansas is having success on first down. What Craig told us is that he wants to win 60% of the time on first down, forcing the offense to be second and long. And to get that, what he has to do is play man coverage. So he puts those corners on an island, and he has to get the pass rush. Kansas is now picking up on that a little bit, and the fade is an excellent route against that defense. So far, the pass rush has come for the most part from Vandenbosch. And now it's third and six. Winbush in motion. Here comes the heat. Blitz is on. Finds Winbush. Dragged down well short of the first down. He got about two feet on that pass play. Irwin Sweeney, a nice open field tackle. Nice change up for Nebraska last week against Oklahoma. And again this week, they've been playing a lot of man coverage. That time they dropped off in zone. And Sweeney, number 16, saw it all the way. He wasn't running downfield with the receiver. He was playing an area out there. And when Winbush came up and caught the ball, he came up and made the tackle. There was a flag on that one. They were talking to the defensive captains for Nebraska. Holding on the offense. It'll be a 10-yard penalty and remain third down. They're going to back them up and hope they can take them out of field goal range. They would have declined that, but that would have left them at about the 18-yard line, line of scrimmage-wise, and given them a decent shot. Now they'll take their chances, try to blow up a play here and take them out of field goal range. It'll be third down and 16 now when the penalty is assessed. Brandon Bosch hasn't even taken that mouthpiece out, I don't think. That's how hungry he is. Uh, he, he is. He's one of those guys, they rotate these defensive players pretty good, but he doesn't come out very often. Kind of guy that's got a pet iguana named Goldberg <laughs> after his favorite wrestler. That tells you about he that He looks guy. a little like Goldberg. He does, doesn't he? Uh, he does. I told him that yesterday. One of the hardest workers on this team, if not the hardest. Third down, 16. At the Nebraska 27-yard line. Smith has some time. Throws. Broken up at the very last moment. By Dwan Gross. That would have been a first down. Well, this is one of the things they wanted to work on is the, is the slot receiver against whomever's covering him, and that was Gross. And it was a good throw, and uh, the ball just didn't get up there quite enough time because Gross had enough time to knock it away. Good play. He had everything they wanted. Receiver was open. I don't know. That ball may have got through. He still should have had it. Knocked it off his chest. Joe wow. Garcia yeah. has never should have attempted caught a field goal against Nebraska. He's got a good leg, though. Going to try from 45. Got all his leg into it and got it. Good kick. <laughs> Joe Garcia puts the first three on the board for Kansas. At least they got something out of the drive. They were looking for seven. They settled for three. It's still Nebraska with a 21 to three lead. Set to kick away to Joe Walker and Bobby Newcomb. Trying to get the kick returns improved. Nebraska has struggled. In fact, they're the worst in the country at it. They won't get a shot at this one as Garcia knocks it out of the back of the end zone. Eric Crouch so far in this game, 30 yards on five rushes. And you talk about a nice touchdown to carry ratio. A one yard sneak, another one yard sneak. And then the last time they had the ball on the option, nobody home. He takes it in from three yards out after getting them down close with a run. Hey, he makes the most of his opportunity. That's He's right. carried it five times, three touchdowns. That's pretty good. And those eye back to saying, we won the shot at I this. I know. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Ne Nebraska has run it 17 times, and they've only thrown one ball, and that was complete to Newcomb. And now it's Crouch in the open field off the fake. Eric Crouch, great speed across the 40. Midfield, Crouch down the sideline. Big time run all the way down. But a lot of people say, including some of the coaches, that he's the fastest guy on the team. From behind the offense, the offense 
offensive line does a nice job, and Newcomb, I mean, and, uh, gets a block from Newcomb, and Crouch goes all the way across the field. He's got good eyes downfield, too, Bob. He, he knows exactly where he is. He runs to the open areas. He's not running into traffic. Floyd was saying yesterday he could be a wide receiver. He could be a running back. He just went 47 yards, the longest run allowed by the Kansas defense all year. Remember, they came in ranked pretty well in the country against the run. Crouch late pitch. Buck Alder gets knocked out of bounds Buck after a pickup of about two. Let's get an update on Northwestern and Michigan. Let's check in with John. Right here on the Burger King update, they exchanged touchdowns on the opening drives and then Drew Henson here, 10 yards to David Terrell. Another touchdown for the Wolverines. They break the tie and now lead it 14-7. Brett. Drew Henson, one of the fine pretty, quarterbacks in the country. Pretty good combination there, right? Yep. Henson to Terrell. We saw Terrell just chew up chunks of yards at the Orange Bowl last year. A three touchdown, 150 yard receiving game. Second and nine, Nebraska here. It's a fullback straight ahead. Judd Davies, some tough yardage to about the 27 yard line. Marcus Rogers made another tackle. Marcus Rogers is going to have to carry a little more of the weight because number 98, Algie Atkinson, the junior outside linebacker, bruised his lower back and his return is questionable in this ballgame. Rogers had eight tackles against Nebraska last year in this matchup. Hurt his leg in the uh, Texas Tech game and really didn't see a lot of action, but back in being rangy and trying to help that defense slow down Nebraska. On a third down, Crouch hits and a fumble out of bounds. And it's short of the first down at the 24-yard line. They haven't fumbled much this year, Bob. They were terrible in that capacity a year ago. Yes, they were awful. I think they had four, something like 49 fumbles on the year. And lost 25. Yeah. There you go right there. This year, not so bad. Crouch, Crouch. Solich was telling me earlier, he says that was the most frustrating thing he's ever gone through in all these years of coaching was that situation with all the fumbles last year. They're going to go on fourth down, fourth and one. They're 8 of 15 on fourth down conversion so far this year. Buckholter breaks free down to the 15-yard line. Almost took it. Andrew Davison holding on for dear life. Some good blocking going on in that front line. A double team between Raiola and Finotti initially opened the hole. Number 55 is Hochstein. He goes across. Looks like uh, the running back missed the hole by one, one slot. Volk came back and let Chaz Murphy have it on a comeback block to help spring him for that first down, down to the 16-yard line. Two tight end set. Crouch, play action throws to the end zone. Wistrom is there and flags are as well. Quincy Rowe trying to stay with a Nebraska tight end. And we're going to have an interference call. But both sides now have been guilty. Both corners have been see not seeing the football. And that's what this one is going to be. Well, Westrom was down there and covered, but the defensive back just doesn't see where the ball's coming from. Well, that's because the receivers are running good routes, turning those guys around. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go! I mean, how often, Bob, when you were a quarterback, you saw that happen? Pass interference on the defense. The ball will be put on the two-yard line. Automatic first down. Were you just thinking to yourself, well, if he's got his back turned, I could just zip it right you in know, him. And you know there's a saying around football in both leagues, the college and the pros, that if the but if the defensive back is doesn't see the ball, he doesn't have his guy covered. That's right. That's right. And they can be they go right by his ear, he can hear it pass him by, yeah. and he can't make a play. If you're not seeing the ball, you don't have him covered. Is there a rule about giving it to your eye back down this close in any one of the leagues? Let's see if Aaron Crouch does. It's first and goal, Nebraska. Crouch keeps it. And no gain on the play. Kareem High, Quincy Rowe made the stop. Rowe, the guy whose penalty put Nebraska down close, was victimized by Derek Doris of Texas Tech for four touchdowns in that loss last week. So he has not had a great week as a defensive back and then trying to stay with Wistrom. Rose only about 5'9", and Wistrom's about 6'5", so 
That was some trouble for him. Second and goal now. Nebraska leading 21 to 3. Matt Davis in the lone wide receiver. Buck Coulter is the eye back. Crouch drops back. Throws. Tipped. Wistrom touchdown. Tracy Wistrom's fifth touchdown catch of the year. Well, they tried to get it to him once, and the second time's a charm. Well, yeah, it was actually pretty good coverage, and uh, ball could have been de deflected, was deflected, could have been intercepted, Neesmith hit it. Doesn't matter. Touchdown for Wistrom. So Crouch has run three and thrown one now. Nebraska putting it on Kansas here in the first half with the extra point up and good. It is 28 and 3. Tracy Wistrom, they tried to throw to him. There was a pass interference and then off play action, a tip. Nice concentration. Touchdown, Nebraska. Down situation. Only took him a little over a couple of minutes to find Tracy Wistrom. Eric Crouch with a touchdown pass. Roger Ross now from the five on the kick return. Out across the 20 to about the 22-yard line. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by the makers of the all-new Dodge Caravan. Dodge different. Chili's Ranch Hand Filet. Tender, juicy, flame-grilled, and served on a bed of awesome blossom strings. And Speed Pass, today's way to pay. It's free for mobile. That's an area near the Nine Mile Prairie, which is a historical area in eastern Nebraska's largest virgin prairie. I love out there. Great shots, aren't they? Yep. We're stringing barbed wire, folks. <laughs> and that guy probably has a place just he, like that. He owns that place. He probably does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have a good time on a Saturday afternoon in Lincoln. <laughs> Reason to cheer on homecoming with a big lead. Winbush and he swallowed up. Carlos Polk. One of the defensive captains drops him for a loss. And Winbush getting up slowly again. Three carries, minus four yards for David Winbush. Winbush got ambushed on this one. 95 is Wisman that just came in there and set it up. And there's a bunch of them. Team defense, a lot of players getting to play here early in the game defensively for Nebraska. after that three-yard loss. Play action. Smith steps up and finds Hill. Nice throw. Going to be close to a first down. I think he's got it, as a matter of fact. Any success the Jayhawks have had has been through the air. They're rushing for a minus eight yards. Pick up a 14 on that one. Swanee Hill's Smith's favorite target. He's caught a lot of balls, but he hasn't done much with them. He, he hasn't. He's He's got speed, but as I talked to Terry Allen at the beginning of the ball game, he said he's more like he's got good possession speed. He's fast as a possession receiver, but he just hasn't been able to cross that big line at the end of the uh, football field. That's right. 35 catches and no touchdowns. Reggie Duncan in there now at the tailback spot. First down, Kansas from its own 32. And it's Duncan. Duncan broke a tackle, cuts outside, tripped up. Or he might have had a big gainer. Nice run the way it is for 12 yards. Coming up Monday on ABC, Dante Culpepper and Chris Carter, Randy Moss and the Vikings travel to Lambeau. They'll take on Brett Favre with their division rivals, the Green Bay Packers, on Monday Night Football, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on ABC. The Vikings have fallen. Everyone has. And so Bob Greasy, Nick Bonacani, and the out, boys. Break out the champagne. Break out the drinks. <laughs> the record's safe. The record's safe. There won't be an undefeated season in 2000. Or another year. Smith lost the pass out there. Incomplete little bump with Keo Craver and the intended receiver, J.T. Thompson, incidental, and the pass was out of bounds anyway. Kansas looking for its first November road win in four years. Not an easy place to try to find it. No, not at all. When you haven't won here since uh, beating this team since 1968. Pepper Rogers was the coach of that Kansas team, and Pepper's what a lobbyist now in Washington. Isn't he? He's <laughs> yeah. done a little bit of everything. Yeah, he's done a little everything. That's yeah. right. Doing what he does best, talking. That's right, exactly. Talking and stalling. 
Here's a little slip screen outside to Roger Ross. Ross got a nice block. Kept his footing and he's Best close to a first down. Might be a foot or so shy. Ross had a career high seven catches for 91 yards in that loss to Texas Tech last week. And the coaches think that he can be a very gifted and special receiver for him. He has excellent speed, great moves. Uh, we'll see a lot from him this afternoon. Played at Garden City Junior College. One of three guys from that school on this team this year. You mentioned junior colleges. They've got 32 players from Texas, and they've got nine JUCOs, nine junior college players starting on the on the 2D. Third down in the yard, and it's Winbush. Broke the tackle, got a first down. Following the block of David Hurst, the tight end, who you saw shift back into that fullback position in the eye. And he led the way. Winbush got tough yardage. He finally gets something positive to go for him and moves the chains. But Winbush has got big play written all over him. If you just get him into the secondary and pass the front seven, he can go the distance. You just wonder now on that bad wheel, though, if that's the case today. It must be awfully minor the way he's running. <laughs> First down at the Nebraska 45. Seventh play of the Kansas drive. Smith. A little stunt going on the front group for Nebraska. And a nice play defensively out of the flats. Mark Vedro, the outside linebacker, made it. That's pretty perceptive with that big uh, big stunt in the front line there. The defensive lineman switching around. You saw that, huh? <laughs> Put a little pressure on the quarterback. Vedro getting the opportunity to start here this afternoon and knocks it away. It's now the big guy, Vedro, only 205 pounds. And that's not an easy play to make for a linebacker to run laterally across the field, keep the eye back on the quarterback, and dive in front of a speedy receiver. Randy Stella would normally be the starter there, suspended for one game for team reasons, according to Frank Solich. And that's all that was said about that. Here's Smith trying to quarterback draw. Carlos Pope, nothing to it. I spy. I spy. There he is, Robert Culp. I'll tell you, I talked to Pope on the sideline. He's a fun-loving guy, and he is a master gamesman. And he loves to play the games. And right here, he's playing extremely well. And Bob, when you and I talked about him being a spy, you mentioned the fact that if he had to back up and watch this quarterback, he'd be in trouble. But the fact that he's staying close to the line. He was up in the line. In, in the line means he's going to be making better tackles. Yeah. His you, teammates say he's yeah. the team clown. They said if he didn't have his head shaved, he, his hair would be multicolored. <laughs> <laughs> Third down and 13. Here comes a blitz. Here comes Polk again. Smith got rid of it. And almost a diving catch by Tremaine Fulton. But it was Carlos on the blitz. Did we mention that Carlos is 260 pounds? That's right. He's a little quicker no. looking than no, that. Nobody that's that big needs to wear a number like 13. <laughs> that, means, that means he can be a middle linebacker for Nebraska or a quarterback for the Vikings, right? Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I think that 13 means bad luck for the opposition. And he forces a punt. And dual return men, Bobby Newcomb, Joe Walker, will go back inside their own 15. Joey Pelfadio set to kick. Nice high boot. Bobby Newcomb lets it go out of bounds. It's going to be right about the 10-yard line. Big no, divot down there right near the 10. So they'll walk it out to the 11. So good job by the Nebraska defense. Their offense looks pretty good, too. 7.35 remaining second quarter. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and our ABC crew on a homecoming weekend in Lincoln, Nebraska. First down for the Cornhuskers. From their own 11 yard line. Crouch the pitch to Alexander. Alexander broke one, didn't break the second tackle. Carl Neesmith, a good open field tackler, made the stop. It's got to be fun running behind this offensive line, anchored by Riola, number 54. It's finishing the block. That's all it is. Number one, you've got to drive your feet. And number two, you've got to clear the hole. Get your feet out of the hole and get your butt out of the hole. <laughs> and that's what offensive linemen want to do. They want to keep their feet moving and then get their body. They, they get their man out of the hole, but then get your body out of the hole. I like that little shove at the end after you've been banging away against somebody for eight seconds. You give them a little shove on the way back to the huddle. They hang around in the weight room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do a little bit. And close to a first down is Dan Alexander. And the size of these linemen clearing that butt out of the hole is a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> we never hung around in the weight room with those guys. Here's Riola right here, number 54. 
That's Dwyer. It's a pretty good battle going That's, on right there. Is. Dwyer's a good player. Yes, he is. And your, point, pounder. and your point about staying with the block was key right there. He really did. He just, he, I mean, this this kid is good. This kid, Ryle, they've got a few good ones. Those, the center and the two guards especially are going to be playing uh, on Sundays down the road. Dan Alexander closing in on a 100-yard day. Got the first down, not quite to 100, but that's going to be 11 carries for about 98 yards for Dan Alexander. And of course, last week we talked about the fact the Ibacks had very little to do with the ball game. Alexander had 27 yards. Buckhalter had 15. The workhorse was crouched with over 100. But this is a little more like Nebraska football and what we expected. That's for sure. And this is this is what the fans have come accustomed to. And this is uh, this is a homecoming game, I guess. This is what they expect. Everybody up close right now for that Kansas defense. Crouch drops back. Might take advantage of it. Going deep. Got a man out there. And it's intercepted by Quincy Rowe. Flags are down. Rowe comes back the other way. Across the 40 midfield. Quincy Rowe tiptoes out at the 41. Now we'll see what the penalty's about. Okay. That's Rowe's fourth interception on the year. He leads this team if that sticks. John Bowling was the intended receiver. Now we'll wait and see if there was an interference call before the interception. It'll be a 15 yard penalty from the previous spot and an automatic first down. So it is not his fourth interception of the year as he pushed Bowling before the ball got there. One of the things you hate on a turnover in the ball game, any ball game, is that the offense is peeling back, trying to make a play. You see the pass interference. Oh, I don't know. Boy, that. that was close. That was touch, that was, touch and yeah. go. But as he returns, the offensive people going out trying to make a stop. Right there, John Rutherford goes in trying to block somebody, hurt something. He laid down on, for quite a while before he got back up, and he's being helped off the field right now. Just that little shove with the right hand. Yeah, just a little shove. And I think if he hadn't have intercepted it, I don't think they would have called the interference. You're because, right. uh, But when you take advantage and you get a big advantage by doing a little advantage, then they're going to call it. Well, now they're even. Now they're even. even. You yeah. know, the push the, and shove. The punt, the punt that, yeah. you know, they, they, they said hit his foot. That we couldn't really tell. It's We're true. back to square yeah. one now. Back to square one. <laughs> John Rutherford. 300 pound junior out of Midwest City, Oklahoma, and he is in some pain. And it's well, taken a long time to get over there. Yeah, and he is a key ingredient. He is the sixth man on that offensive line we've been kind of highlighting in the first half. He can play any of those positions along the front. And one of the problems with an interception is, especially way down the field, is somebody's got to go tackle the guy. And offensive linemen aren't used to going downfield right. trying to tackle the shifty defensive back. From the 40, hit in the backfield is Alexander. Tim Bowers, nice job from his linebacker position. So it's going to bring up second down and 10. And that first down line brought to you by Pacific Life. Our first and 10, as you can see, is right about at midfield. Second down and closer to 11, actually, with 5.20 remaining in the first half. 28 to 3, Nebraska. Bobby Newcomb. They fake the end around. They give it to Alexander straight up the middle, and he's over 100 yards on the ground today. Nice hole in the middle again. Well, it's right in here. Watch these guys. Rioli, number 54, the center. Look at that hole, finishing the block. Ooh, right, in the, right in the throat. There, just a next, little extra one for you. Take that one with you. As long as the whistle doesn't blow, he can keep pushing and uh, shoving. Does he get credit for a pancake if he knocks him down on the I second think so, push? Yeah. Yeah. And the whole stack of them in this game so far. Nice play fake by Crouch, and he'll keep it around the left side. Eric Crouch down to the 37-yard line. Nifty handwork by Crouch, and then his feet take over. Did you say, partner, this is Nebraska football? It is. Huh? Get the running game going. They've already got over 200, 200 yards in this game already. 222 yards plus this little run. Well, Crouch is shifty in the open field, isn't he? All these teams come in and play Nebraska that have great defensive stats against a run, <laughs> and they look so good, then suddenly they play Nebraska, and it's like, uh, with his rush Kansas defense. Kansas defensively had not given up 100 yards in any game in the last three games. They've given up 100 just to Alexander, and he's still coming with it. And he's adding to it. Inside the 30, Dan goes. 
Willie Miller got a nice block on that one. Victor Marcus Bullock Rogers. and Marcus Victor Rogers Bullock. combined on the stop. Four minutes remaining. Coming up tomorrow, the ABC, the Tour Championship at 2 o'clock Eastern Time. Tigers tied for the lead in that one. We saw some of that before we went on the air. Playing down at East Lake. Second down and three. Buck Halter. And he's going to be short of the first down. Rodgers again gets off the bottom of the pile. Along with Chaz Murphy. Here comes the extra beef. As Nebraska's got the short yardage situation. Third down and two coming up. Four out of five today. They'll take that 80% anytime. Buckhalter stood up. Nice job by the defense. Marcus Rogers and Carl Neesmith. And I don't think he got it. Well, that's the difference in the two offenses. Nebraska has third and short most of the afternoon. In Kansas, four of their seven uh, third down situations have been third down and ten or more. Good job by those two. It's going to be close. The safety and the middle linebacker. They're going to bring the chains out. Nebraska's third downs, they've had three third and ones, a third and two, a third and four, and one third and nine. That was the longest. Last week against Oklahoma, as you see, they made it. Last week against Oklahoma, they had a ton of third and ten or more, which is highly unusual for this team. That's a neck that Riola has there. That's not a side of beef. <laughs> I thought it was a mutant leg sticking up under his head. <laughs> Mel, oh boy. His offensive offensive line coach Mel Teneper <laughs> was telling us that he is he means as much to that offensive line as Eric Crouch means to the whole team. That's some pretty high praise. First down just inside the Kansas 27 yard line. Alexander again off the right side and a nice hole again and down to the 19. Andrew Davison holding on eight more yards for Alexander. You get the feeling we're going to see Alexander all the way to the end zone to end this quarter and then Buckhalter a bunch in the third quarter. Well, I don't know. I'm not quite sure. If they get inside the five-yard line. Then it's Eric Krause. Uh, and it's Eric <laughs> Krause. I'm wondering if Alexander is taking his quarterback out for a meal yet. <laughs> George Darlington, the defensive backfield coach, was telling me that Viola's got a young uh, brother that they're recruiting, uh, looking at. He's out in Hawaii. Crouch will keep it. Eric Crouch inside the 10. Crouch down to the 2. Kareem High with the tackle, but it's a 17-yard pickup for Eric Crouch. And now Crouch is starting to put some numbers up. As he, too, is over 100 yards rushing. Yes, he is. 120 for Alexander and over 100 now for Crouch. Just good blocking and crosses. Get me to the outside and I can take care of it. High does a nice job to prevent him from getting in the end zone. Swanee, you want to make the call here? Uh, well, you know, Alexander has got to carry it in there sooner or later, you think, don't you? I would think so. We'll I think, see. I think for uh, team unity and spirit, you got to give it to the eye back every uh -oh, now. Oh, we're wrong. Touchdown, <laughs> Eric Crouch. That one looked almost too easy. His fourth rushing touchdown of the day. Five possessions, five touchdowns. Crouch is going to have to go over the sideline and hug his two running backs pretty soon. Yeah, he better. <laughs> Give him some love, make him feel like it. I, I'd go pat some of those offensive linemen myself. <laughs> They're harder to hug. Your arms aren't long enough. Josh yeah, but, Brown for the point after. But those big butts give you confidence. <laughs> <laughs> Extra point is good. And it is 35 to 3. Eric Crouch, four scores on the ground, one through the air. Between Kansas and Nebraska in 1923 marked the dedication of this stadium. And today there's a record crowd on hand, 78,096, biggest crowd ever, and they're having a happy homecoming because it's 35 to 3. 
Ross from the 12. And only about five yards on the return. Time for our courtyard by Marriott moment from a year ago, October 30th of 99 in Lawrence. For the second straight year, Kansas was facing Nebraska after a Huskers first loss of the season. They led by nine at halftime, but Bobby Newcomb changed it all with an 86-yard punt return in the third. Then he hooked up with Eric Crouch on a 49-yard touchdown pass with four minutes remaining, and that helped spark Nebraska to a come-from-behind win with over 200 all-purpose yards and a couple of touchdowns. Last week, Last year, rather, after the loss to Texas before Kansas, it was kind of a sleepy week for the Cornhuskers. They hung their heads a little bit. When we came into town this week, they said, we didn't see any of that this week. We're ready to play. Yep. Boy, were they right. And I think part of that was the uh, BCS poll that came out on Monday. Right. And I think uh, they thought they may drop to five, six, or seven. They only dropped to number four. And then before the game today, they see that Virginia Tech gets beat. So they automatically, Nebraska automatically kicks up to number three. The only problem is the big win by Miami over Virginia Tech. And right. I think that's why Nebraska and Frank Solich, what he was saying to Lynn before the game and kind of not saying, but he was saying, but you know, we want to win, but we want to we do it in a good fashion. Bernard Thomas and Kyle Vandenbosch meet at the quarterback and Smith looked like it was a broken play like he wanted to throw a shovel pass and then he just took a took a seat. Dylan is uh, 10 of 18 98 yards. And Nebraska takes one of its timeouts they've got an opportunity to get the ball back if they stop this third down and long right now. Dylan Smith talking to the coaches on the sideline. The last Nebraska drive, by the way, was 89 yards, so their last two drives have been 80-plus. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, and Lynn Swan with you on a picture-perfect day. It was about 60 degrees and sunny at kickoff. It'll cool off a little bit, but it's been a red-hot Eric Crouch and company. Crouch, four touchdown runs and a touchdown pass. football and a perfect first half almost for Nebraska you take away that punt that came down and bounced off one of the Nebraska players that's what Kansas turned into a field goal otherwise it's total domination by the Huskers right now and they're hoping to stop them here and get even more before halftime third down and 12 Smith's in trouble here comes Vandenbosch, but he got rid of it. Incomplete. Intended for Ross. Lauren Kaiser put on the heat first, and then Vandenbosch came flying in there, and the Nebraska defense with Carlos Polk and company has forced another three and out. They're fourth, and there's Craig Bull, the first guy to meet him. There you go. A fired-up defensive coordinator. Taking over for Charlie McBride, and, you know, there's got to be a little bit of... A little he not a he not heat on Craig Bowl, but you know he wants to do well after after replacing a legend and at least around here in Charlie McBride. Everybody up close. Belfonio's inside his own five, but the return is on. Nice kick. Walker backpedals to the 40. Joe Walker. And about seven on the return. Pretty good coverage down there by the Jayhawks. And Eric Crouch will come out. Look at the first half. A touchdown throw and four rushing scores and over 100 yards on the ground. A couple of 50-yard plus drives to open things up. Alexander got him close. Crouch took him in. And then another 56-yard drive. Crouch again from a yard out. And Eric had a nice run from three. And a couple of minutes ago, it was kind of a laughing cakewalk as he got his fourth rushing touchdown. His throw was to Tracy Wistrom. So he's accounted for five touchdowns today. Yeah, two of two passing, only only two passes. Nebraska's thrown 20 yards and a touchdown. See if he puts one up here. Waning moments of the second quarter. Going to throw a screen and a nice play defensively by Tim Bowers. The linebacker drops Buckhalter in his tracks. Two-time captain Bowers uh, doing a nice job. Here's a look at uh, Eric Crouch and where he runs and how he's doing. Those three touchdowns up the middle were all quarterback sneaks uh, or something close to that. And uh, doing pretty well on all spots on the field. Yes. But the first thing they got going was the eyebacks uh, running behind that offensive line right at them. 
That was the first time Nebraska has thrown a pass on first down, attempting that screen out there to Buckholder that was blown up. Coming up on the MSN halftime report, John Saunders and Terry Bodden left scores and highlights from across the country on a crucial day in college football. And of course, Terry's brother and daddy have a big one coming up in Tallahassee tonight. They'll talk about that too. Florida State and Clemson getting together. If you have not heard, Virginia Tech has fallen from the undefeated ranks today as Miami put it on them. And Miami made it look like whether Michael Vick was in there or not, they were going to win that football game. Wake Forest, a winner over Duke in a battle of beatings today. Should have passed that one along to you. And we'll update the uh, Michigan Northwestern score as well. That's 25 seconds from now. Second and 15. Four wideouts for Eric Crouch. And let's see if he's going to tuck it and take off. And he will. Good open field stop by Marcus Rogers. Rogers has been in on a lot of tackles. A couple in this first of pretty half. good linebackers in Rogers and Bowers. So Nebraska is going to go to the locker room with a big advantage at halftime, bouncing back from the loss to Oklahoma and looking. All the part of the number six team in the country and the number four team in the BCS rankings through two quarters. It is Nebraska 35, Kansas 3. John Saunders, Terry Bodden will be along the MSN halftime report when we return. 12 championship race has kept himself in the Heisman chase as well in the first half alone a touchdown pass to Wistrom he scored four times on the ground himself that ties a record single game record for quarterbacks and it's 35 to 3 right now at halftime Nebraska leading Kansas and there's the numbers on Eric Crouch phenomenal first half for him and we welcome you back to Memorial Stadium Lincoln Nebraska we're not Charlie's Angels Brad Nestler Bob Greasy Lynn Swan Eric Crouch, what he's hogging the spotlights. What's with you, quarterbacks? I don't hey, get it. You know they make all. You know they uh, they study the hardest. They uh, they're the best <laughs> looking. They do all the work. So they got. You know he's three for three in throwing, and he's you know, all those touchdowns. So, but. Uh, Swanee, you're on the field before the game. Anyway, we knew they were going to be fired up. They are. They're fired up. They're playing efficient football. I mean, they only have one penalty in the first half for 14 yards, and they're just playing the kind of football that they're capable of and very professional like. Defensively, Vanden Bosch and Polk have showed up today. Well, the thing that I'm impressed with is that offensively they've had the ball really five times and they've scored all five. Defensively, they've come out and they've really stopped every dive that uh, the Jayhawks have. Now they've got one field goal, but uh, and that was off. Uh, kind of a questionable call on that punt that yeah. hit one of the Nebraska players. Right. So uh, you know, Solich has got to be very happy. Offense and defense is clicking, and the special teams uh, really that one mistake. And again, they can't get a kickoff return. They've only returned 11 of them all year coming into this game. Joe Walker takes a knee as we take a look at our Morgan Stanley Dean Witter. First half statistics. Look at the rushing yardage. Right 281. There. Now that's a, against a team that had given up an average of 119 a game. Right. And the uh, starting uh, average starting field position. Uh, that's uh, that's huge also. That was a problem last week against Oklahoma. Among other things. Oklahoma today if you didn't see some of the halftime highlights with John and Terry Josh Heifel has kept himself in the top several rungs of the Heisman ladder too. he had a 319 yard three touchdown in the air one on the ground day so Oklahoma continues to roll along here's the backs today this is this is Nebraska football over two of their backs are over 100 yards uh, Crouch and Alexander. And Buck Holder, I would think, uh, probably will be by the end of the, the day. time. They'll get a lot of carries the second half, and he may be over 100. They've run it 37 times. Only three times have they lost yardage or not gained anything. And they're going to gain some here. Buck Holder cuts up inside, keeps banging away, and he's out to the 31 yard line. First down, tough run. Well, of, of Nebraska's 39 total plays in the first half, 27 of the 39 were in Jayhawk territory. Nebraska had 39 plays, 36 of them were runs, and three were passes. Here's Buck Alder. A great look as he weaves his way through the traffic. He's actually the leading career rusher of the three guys in that 6,000 yard plus backfield. Bobby Newcomb, they fake the end around. Buck Alder straight off the left side behind his left guard, and he got about seven more. 
They come out the second half the same way they started the first half, and that is running right at them. And this, the strength is that offensive line. Let's let these big guys do what they do best. One of the strengths also showing up in today's ball game is the leadership that Nebraska has on the football team where they didn't get themselves too far down. You know, Riola, Crouch on offense, Alexander, everybody understanding what you have to do to get ready for this ball game, and now coming out and doing it. Second down, Crouch will keep it. First down, Eric Crouch. Out to the 47, maybe the 48-yard line, another nine-yard pickup. Well, here's the near perfection. You can't do any better than that. A couple of drives in the 50 range, then a short one, and then two of 80 plus, all resulting in touchdowns. All Eric Crouch had a hand in, either through the air or on the ground. That last drive was just a drive before the half. And really, I think they tried one screen and they gave up on the drive. That's right. 19 times for 151 yards on first down. Let's see if they go behind the biggins again in that same capacity. Crouch going to change things up. Scott Newcomb. It's easy to do when you're at home. Check off. And he comes this way, and he's cut down at the line of scrimmage. Nice play by Matt, uh, Nate Dwyer and Denard Whitfield. You stopped on the play. 12:45 to go in the third. Oh, you hear these guys on the radio all the time. Now you can see them when your favorite recording artists get together for the 2000 Radio Music Awards. Live tonight on ABC. And an injured Kansas player down, and it's Dwyer, a junior from Stillwater, Minnesota. He's the tough defensive lineman leading that defensive line in tackles. And, and you can see it's been a big day going against Riola and company. <laughs> He came in leading the team in tackles and tackles for loss, I should say. Had six sacks along with two other guys. And uh, anybody that plays against this offensive line, including Riola, is uh, going to have their hands full. You see Ryan Atkinson, 91, has to get in against Riola now to take Wire's spot. Here's Buck Halter. Broke a tackle. Nice step arm inside the 35. Down to the 34-yard line. And here goes Buck Halter. Now that's 19 more for him. And you can almost see it coming that it's going to be way over 100 yards by all three of those guys. The best they've done this year on the ground, Nebraska, 505 yards against San Jose State. A couple of pretty good blocks. Here's Finoti, the 335-pound guy. Watch the fullback also get a block. Finoti right here. Look at this. And now you've got your lane. The fullback gets his. <laughs> Here's a cutback run by Buck Halter into the secondary and he goes down all the way to the 17 the 18 yard line and Buck Halter's about one carry away from being over the century mark. It's behind the offensive line and you keep talking about these guys and you got to give credit to Milt Teneper the offensive line coach because he's had good offensive lines here down through the years and they all the same. They're all very athletic. They all have good feet and they can move. They can you know, you don't see guards anymore, a lot in college, and especially in the pros, that can get up and pull around in on the old sweeps. These guys can. Three wide receiver grouping here. On a first down, Willie Miller, the fullback, and almost took the umpire out. As he got inside the 12, Chaz Murphy knocked him off his feet. Willie had that big run last week yes. that ignited things in the first quarter. A 43-yard gallop that helped them on one of their touchdown drives. Right now, Nebraska with 11 and a half minutes to go in the third quarter, playing like a team that's got a plane to catch. Yeah, well, they said they want to come out and score in the second half. Kansas said earlier in the week that we have two different game plans defensively, one for the first half, one for the second half. Nebraska's beating them both. I was going to say, neither one's working. Miller going to be close to a first down. Well, we talked about Oklahoma and the way they played against Nebraska and executed. And you can have a great game plan. You can have all the right bodies in the right place. But if you don't have the people that can make the plays once That's you right. get them there, yeah, you know, that, that option just keeps rolling works, and rolling. Works hand in hand, doesn't it? Yes, it does. First down, Nebraska. And it is a first down for Willie Miller. And it's first and goal. Cornhuskers leading 35 to 3 and looking to add more. Tessa Brooks and Thomas are the wide receivers, but the play's coming to Buckholder on the toss. 
Corral Buckholder inside the five. He won't go down. He's got Jayhawks all over him. Finally drops inside the five. Marcus Rogers is there. So is Chaz Murphy. They've been some busy linebackers. Well, now the question is, <laughs> who gets the call? <laughs> Who's going to get the touchdown? <laughs> Raiola, number 54, gets the. That's what they're talking about against this deep, against this offense, the offensive line. You got to stay on your feet. They do a nice job, the offensive line, of cutting and creating creases in your defense and huge lanes for the running backs to get through. Stay on your feet, though. Those things don't happen. Second and goal, just inside the Kansas five. Buckalter, straight ahead. some eye back love. I don't think that's fair. Let's I go. do. <laughs> that's a bad time. Well, they got a great training table, so maybe the backs don't have to buy Eric Crouch dinner, <laughs> but maybe Buckhalter at least picked up the tray for him. <laughs> well, that to be 42 to 3. Buckhalter, a great effort on that drive. He did most of the work. And 61 of the yards on that drive are his. The extra point by Josh Brown is good. So all the backs are involved. They're all at 100 plus, and it is all Nebraska 42 to 3. Second time in school history, the Huskers have had 300 yard plus rushers in the same game. Buck Alter took it in on the last one to make it 42 to 3. Derek Mills on the kick return. Mills out to about the 25 yard line. That's where Kansas will go to work trailing 42 to 3. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Ford F Series. The best selling trucks are built Ford tough. Pacific Life, annuities, insurance, investments. Use the power of Pacific Life. Sears and the Sears National Champion Football Trophy. And Burger King got the urge. That's the Holtmeyer farm. Joyce and Jim and Chuck own that. Uh, second generation farmers and Nebraska season ticket holders for 56 years. Doing a little corn shell in there. <laughs> filling up you. that 18 wheeler. There's some cows out there on the on the on the on the meadows are looking for that corn. They're happy. <laughs> Here's Winbush hitting the backfield again. Mark Vedrill, the linebacker, with the hit. Here's the BCS top six in the key games remaining. If you haven't heard, Virginia Tech lost to Miami. Next week, Oklahoma has to go down to AM. They beat Kansas State down there last week. So Wild Tech have dropped down, just a matter of how far they'll drop. Florida State tonight plays Clemson. And Florida on the 18th. Nebraska's got a Kansas State team that really came storming back against Iowa State. That's next week in Manhattan. There's a lot of football left. Second down at 13. Smith fires complete. And Winbush is tripped up by Carlos Polk, who's had as good a game as we've seen him have all year. Some of those games left are the, are, there's two conference championship games that have been getting a lot of uh, discussion lately. The Big 12 has a championship game, which uh, Nebraska and Oklahoma would have to go through if they hope to win a national championship possible rematch and then the SEC has a championship game which the only one in that scenario that we showed you would be Florida if they get that far. And the penalty markers and, and the MAC conference has one. Or yes they do but the, the winners as there as won't have an impact they on won't the they won't compete with the BCS. national championship yeah. Prior to the Prior snap, snap, false start on the offense. It'll be a five-yard penalty and remain third down. Well, the big thing is that everybody talks about now is what coaches like it and what coaches don't. We talked to Frank Solich about it yesterday. Obviously, this is a year where he's he probably is not too crazy about the idea of a Big 12 championship. This year he is. I think he loves it this year. I think, <laughs> I, I think if, you, if you're in control of your own destiny and you win the conference, you can say, hey, I don't want to go and have to beat the other uh, division. Nick Spurrier is in favor of uh, winning the things on the field, and I think he likes it. Third down, 15. Look out. Here comes Vandenbosch. He got away, though. Smith on the run, and a good run it is. Fumble at the end, and the ball is down, and I think it's going to be a first down by Dylan Smith. That was a nice scramble. Yes, very nice. He's running scramble. for his life. 
He's the second leading rusher on the uh, Kansas team. He saw number 83 out of the corner of his eye and his 40 yard dash time increased Make, by about two tenths of a second. Yeah, that's so true. The big dog theory. You always run faster when the big dogs is chasing you down the sideline. <laughs> and how did he see him? Well, you just feel him. <laughs> you, you, know, you know the talents and abilities of every one of your offensive linemen, and you know where they might be overmatched. Poor David Wimbush has been having nowhere to run and nowhere to hide today. He's carried it six times for minus five yards. Brad, Bob, just going back to that playoff situation for a second, I, th I think the real key is no coach who's dominated a team early in the year, whether it's college or the pro ranks, wants to see them again in the playoff. Right. The Titans didn't want to see Jacksonville that third time because they already dominated them twice. The odds were you're not going to do well. Florida and Florida State, we covered that game when Florida came back and beat Florida State in the Sugar Bowl for a national championship. And Bobby wasn't for it then, didn't right. like the rematch. So I, I think in that situation, most coaches don't want to have a playoff that jeopardizes the dominance they've already displayed. You're talking about a conference championship. Correct. Game. Yeah. Correct. And you know Bob Stoops doesn't want to see one well, right there, now. There was never conference championship games before in football before they went to 12 teams. And the reason they went to championship games is because you split the two divisions, six and six. Here's Hill. A quick pass got him about four or five. Craver and Booker run him out of bounds. Coming up tomorrow on ABC, the Tour Championship at 2 o'clock Eastern time. Final round coverage from East Lake Country Club in Atlanta. Tiger Woods tied for the lead. B.J. Singh's with him there, and uh, that'll create a great finish, obviously. You know, last year, I played with Tiger Woods at the Tour Championship. And, you've, you've showed and us won. some of that prowess, too. Yeah, uh, he, I, I learned a lot from him. You, yeah. weren't, you weren't paying attention from what I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if I hit like him. I, could just, I would like to be able to swing like him and not fall down. Third and five. The throw is complete. But it's at the line of scrimmage to Duncan, and he's dropped right there. Keo Craver with a big hit on the corner. So that was the shortest third down they had all day, and they still only got about a yard. And the Nebraska defense has done its work, its homework this week, and its work today. Bobby Newcomb backpedaling with Joe Walker in a dual punt return formation. Very few teams around the country use two guys back there. Yeah. Nebraska is one of them. Joey Palfanio to punt high snap. He handles it. And Bobby Newcomb should have a play on this one from the 11. Bobby Newcomb found a little bit of an opening and out near the 35 yard line. About a 25 yard return on the punt, so not much gained for Kansas on that exchange. <laughs> Nebraska will take over at the 34 yard line. With six minutes, 16 seconds remaining in the third quarter, a timeout from Lincoln. We'll take a break and be back in a moment. Coming weekend in Lincoln, 42 to three Cornhuskers and penalty markers down. Jamal Lord is in at quarterback, so Eric Crouch's day is done. And in a productive one it was for Eric. Four scores on the ground and one through the air. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. It'll be a five-yard penalty and remain first down. So the last drive, the first one of the second half. Let's take a look at the offensive line. Moving it out, Hochstein is 55, Finotti 77, Volk. Left tackle is 58. Miller, the fullback. Riola, number 54, is in the end zone looking for somebody to block. Here comes Davies, the fullback, playing like a guy that would like to make it four rushers over 100 yards. He goes for 13, the big fella. 240-pound redshirt freshman from up the road in Omaha. He and Willie Miller, right about the same size, 240, 245. Eric Crouch, such a productive day and continues to move up all the career lists. We were talking about that with him yesterday. A lot of those he doesn't know anything about until uh, somebody tells him. And the total offense mark of Tommy Frazier is 
very much in his sights. Well, that might happen well, this year, especially since Eric Crouch is only a junior. That's right. He's got a year to do all that. There you go. David Hums, the all time passer. I don't think Eric will hit those numbers, but still, he's been a pretty productive nice. passer as well. Nice kid. Bright, bright kid. Aaron Diedrich's in at the eye back now. Lord with a pay play fake and a throw. Davies trying to go down low to get it and couldn't. And talking with Eric Crouch, we mentioned some of the names Steve the Tommy Frazier's, the Steve Taylor's, those kind of guys, the company he's joined. It's a huge honor to be, uh, you know, mentioned in the same category and, and to be able to look back on it and say, you know, wow, that's something that I may, maybe never thought I could accomplish, and, and I did. So it's. You know, I'm proud of myself and proud of my teammates for for helping me you know, get that accomplishment. As Bob said, he's a sharp kid. Good looking guy. Yeah, but he has trouble getting dates here in Lincoln. And maybe that's why he's wearing that turtleneck. <laughs> Swanee. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. I didn't. <laughs> Fumble and a ball loose and Kansas has it. Well, Jamal Lord is the backup quarterback and if anything should happen to Eric Crouch, He's the guy, and uh, you can be sure that uh, Turner Gill, the quarterback coach, and Solich on the sideline won't like that. Well, we saw what happened with Vitek today. You know, you have Vic out, right. and they got to play Miami, and their backup comes in the ball game, and he just really couldn't get it done. So they, they end up putting Vic back in the ball game. It, it's a bad wheel. It's 42 to three, but this is very important time for Nebraska. Uh, that young man right there. You know, it just, it's not. Uh, and they weren't saying that's all right. You know, they expect some production when he gets into the ball game. Smith in trouble, throws off his back foot, just trying to get rid of it. He got planted by John Clanton. It's a good, it's a new rule in college football this year, and a good one where the quarterback, if he gets outside the pocket area, can throw it away to avoid uh, getting a sack or getting injury. I like that. So you see some of the backup people on the defensive line in there as well. Selective and is still in there. And Kelsey the two starting ends. Vandenbosch has had a great game. We could almost see that in his eyes talking to him yesterday that that was going to be the case. Second and ten. Throw over the middle the umpire right in the way of Tremaine Fulton. And it's incomplete. A little over five minutes to go. It's going to bring up a third and ten. And our first and ten presented by Pacific Life. And you can see they've got to get down to the 32 yard line for a first down. I like that. I, uh, I'm sitting at home watching. If, if the game doesn't have it, I'm missing it. Seventh time it's been third and ten or more. It's third and ten here from the gun. Here comes the pressure. Throw is intercepted. Slecta with a cast on his hand and all with the interception. Well, he may not be able to grab very well with the hand in the cast, but he can arm catch a football. One of two guys who broke a bone in his hand last week. He didn't look like it there. Swanee said Nebraska's got it back. Jeremy select his first career interception. A happy defensive lineman on the Nebraska sideline. 285 pounder dropping off into coverage. Here's Diedrich. Aaron Diedrich cuts it outside. And he's out near a first down. Got to the 45 yard line. Let's go back and take a look from behind the offense. Now you ask about a zone blitz. Here is a defensive lineman right here. The linebacker is going to blitz from over on this side and watch as he's going to drop out of the coverage. He's going to get back into coverage. Comes from the left side. There's Selector right there. He's a defensive lineman. You don't think those guys are going to drop out. You think they're going to rush and sometimes it'll fool a quarterback. Here's Lord, the Nebraska quarterback. Holds on to it this time and has a first down run to the 38-yard line. High and Neesmith make the stop. Selected. 
had a knee injury last year, a partial tear of his ACL, and then came back, played another game, played the Kansas State game, and then totally tore it. And so coming back from injury and now wearing the cast on his hand with a broken bone suffered last week against Oklahoma and makes uh, the biggest play of his season. Dylan Smith, Dylan, there'll be better days here against a hungry group out here this afternoon. Four minutes left in the third quarter. And it's Davies. Short gain to the 35. Marcus Hayes in on the stop. Talk about just finish up on that conference championship games and the, the, the pros and the cons of it. You have a North Division and a South Division in the Big 12. What if those two teams that win those different divisions don't play? Then it's good that they play. So well, some, some years it's good and some years it's not. But that that may be one of the one of the faults of the super conference theory. You, you don't can't have a play round everybody. Robin, yeah, you don't have a round robin thing like the ACC having only nine teams. They get to see everybody, so it's a little more even. But they of course don't have a conference championship game to worry about. Lord, nice stiff arm, and Lord is out of bounds with another first down run at the 24-yard line. The uh, the other the uh, if if you didn't say you didn't have it and you had 12 teams and you didn't have a conference championship, maybe by. So there's those 11 other teams that you could play. And so you're only going to play eight of the 11. So maybe the three that you don't play are the strongest teams in the conference. <laughs> right. Then, then you're the Big Ten. <laughs> yeah. So, no. you know, then, then you, you know, you'd say, well, you should go to a conference championship game and, you know, play somebody that's really good. Well, as Swanee said, it certainly didn't hurt Northwestern and Wisconsin on a couple of the years they went to Rose Bowls that they didn't have. Ohio State and Michigan or Michigan and Penn State right. or whatever the case when might they be. were really strong yeah. exactly and in that situation you do have two co-champions and that co-champion is usually going to be able to go to a pretty good bowl right Frank Solich had his team ready he knew it and they have played definitely up to their BCS and their national ranking today after the disappointment in Norman of last week the Catch a moment ago, by the way, was the first for a wide receiver today. And it moves it down to a second down of two. And we approach the two-minute mark of the third quarter. Lord on the give. Diedrich somehow kept his balance, and then he took a shot straight on from Kareem High, a busy safety today. Don't forget Monday Night Football this week. Randy Moss and Chris Carter and company go to Lambeau Field. They'll take on Brett Favre and the Packers. It's Monday live, 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 Pacific on ABC. And tomorrow night on ESPN, by the way, the uh, Super Bowl champion Rams play host to the Carolina Panthers. That comes your way at 8.30 Eastern. Third down and four for Lord and the Huskers. Comes a blitz. Lord will keep it. He's going to be close to the first down, but I don't think he got it. There'll be another Winstrom uh, out in the field when yeah. St. Louis plays. Grant. Wist Wistrom, that is. Grant had, uh, I think he had three sacks in last week's game, didn't he? He's coming on now. And his uh, shadow is still felt around here in Lincoln because of uh, Vanden Bosch. And, uh, yep. you know, he's like uh, Vanden Bosch rooms with uh, Tracy Wistrom, the tight end, and the brother of Grant. And uh, he's a defensive end, and uh, he's a captain. And uh, Grant Wistrom uh, took him under his wing. Took him under his wing. And he'd still run through a wall for him. Yep. Right. Fourth and a yard. Nebraska goes and Diedrich goes straight up the middle and bangs his way into a first and goal. Andrew Davison met him. And he ran through that. And then High and Neesmith have to bring him down. And we got an injured Jayhawk down at the end of that play and that tackle might be Kareem High. We'll see it from this angle for sure. Well, High was the first guy hit. Yeah, Diedrich is auditioning for next year to be the starting back. He'll be a good one too. Nebraska keeps something stat wise that I don't think many schools in Division one do and that's a pancake block for their offensive line and I think it's a good idea and a pancake block is when the offensive lineman puts the defensive lineman that they're blocking on their back on the ground and and uh, and they keep track of them and it's 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 something that the offensive line watch Finoli number 77 right over here let's take a try take a look and see if he gets a pancake block all these guys know it 
Now, that guy just took a dive. Yeah, that was a waffle. <laughs> that was a waffle dive. <laughs> but he's had a few today. Oh, yeah. I mean, they usually get under him and take him over. And you, you, the, the, we talked about finishing the block earlier on and their footwork. That's what it takes to get a pancake is to finish the block with your feet. I think it's Andrew Davison that's down who was on the end of that tackle. Swanee talked about their red zone offense today perfect and all touchdowns man that is some kind of number yeah that's that's finishing off a drop mm -hmm. solid control you know one of the characteristics of Nebraska football when they're running that option and the defense is working is not just the numbers they get on the scoreboard but it's the wearing down of the opponent and you wear them down physically and you wear them down emotionally and you wear them down mentally it's a tough place right now for Kansas to be in or the down on the scoreboard, the physically being attacked, guys like Alexander you see right there just running through them on the offense in the first half in the third quarter. There's uh, some sportsmanship for you as Davison finally gets up. Yeah. Nebraska players giving him a hand. He got dinged at the end of that play. Yeah. Very polite people. They fans are. Fans of the Cornhuskers. Remember, I remember doing a game here. Washington, University of Washington came in and beat Nebraska here and on the way out cheered out, the Huskies, out of the stadium, right? uh, the players were going out of the stadium down at the end the, the the crowd that was still here applauded the Husky players. <laughs> they love their college football here and it is a happening every time they play that's why there's been 238 straight sellouts dating back to the early 60s. First down Nebraska. Diedrich follows his blockers and Finds the five yard line. Neesmith again. That is one tough nose safety. They call him the butcher. He'll hit you. He had 14 tackles against Nebraska in this matchup last year. And I got to bet you that he's going to be in double figures for sure again this time around. Yeah. And last week he had a mild concussion. And hurt his shoulder versus Ted. And he's still out here playing today. Nebraska has had the ball seven possessions. This is their seventh possession, and they've scored a touchdown on every possession so far. Might be the final play of the third quarter. As Jamal Lord has got the Huskers at the five yard line, and that's going to do it. Oh, it's a timeout taken with 10 seconds remaining. So, Nebraska. Coming back this week after their loss against Oklahoma, the top-ranked team in the country. Oklahoma rolled on Baylor today. Virginia Tech is lost as you look at the BCS standings. This was coming into the day. Obviously, we're not going to see these again now updated until Monday. There will be a lot of speculation, though, about what's going to happen. I'm kind of looking from the bottom up myself. Well, yeah. I know you are. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking to, out of the top ten, <laughs> wherever USC is. Purdue was idle today. So there will be a shakeup again in the not only the national rankings, but the BCS, which is really more important right now. That's what Nebraska is thinking. But uh, Miami, pretty impressive with their win over Virginia Tech. We got a chance to see some of that. And Kenny Dorsey and Santana yeah. Moss and company look and, good. And Florida, who is sixth in the BCS poll, won convincingly. Frank uh, Solich wants his troops here to win convincingly. And then you've got the Bowden boys uh, yep. battling it out tonight. And Bobby, you know, is going to be in a, put in a situation if he can. And he needs to. He needs to run up the score a little bit on Tommy if he can do it. Yeah, he won't be nice to him. He, he certainly won't. They better get all the nice of these out yeah. yesterday, and, <laughs> and that's it. And, and Tommy says he understands how the game's played. They got dinner out of the way last night. Yeah. I think it's all over now, except the game. Lord, on a keeper, skip in from five yards out, touchdown Nebraska. And Jamal's got his fourth rushing touchdown of the year. Yeah, flexing his wings a little bit there, pumping yeah. his chest out. Those quarterbacks in Nebraska sure score a lot of touchdowns. They sure do. Four receivers don't get a whole lot of chances around here. Well, they build the offense around the quarterbacks, you know, the most gifted guys, the most smartest. talented, well, yeah. smartest, yeah. talented, you know. Now, let's talk about smart and talented. We'll talk about Eric Crouch. And he's got another year here at Nebraska. But if he were to play in the NFL, he's not a quarterback. That's true. 
He's a free safety, probably. Or wide receiver. Scott Frost, remember him? Yep. Scott started yeah. in the NFL. He's with the Jets. Well, I think he's a wide receiver. I don't know if he wants to hit that many people. I know this guy's not a wide receiver. <laughs> Nebraska's got 421 yards on the ground. As I mentioned, they had over 500 against San Jose State early in the season. And they're on that kind of pace because we've got a quarter of football left. At 7 o'clock Eastern for Pacific tonight on ESPN, the game that we just talked about, a big one from the ACC. Number 10, Clemson, traveling to Tallahassee to take on the number four Florida State Seminoles. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Sold out, Memorial Stadium, 78,096, a record crowd here with us today. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasley, Lynn Swan, and our ABC crew, happy to be part of homecoming. And this will be the 32nd straight time that Nebraska will hand Kansas their lunch. There's a nice hat. Yeah, I know a microwave that's looking for it. <laughs> I want to know what was in the glass. <laughs> Roger Ross at the six. Nice move out to the 26. And that'll bring the third quarter to a close. All three quarters dominated by the guys in crimson. ABC Sports presentation of college football will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Set to start the fourth quarter. Nebraska leading 49 to 3. And Kansas will have it first and 10 at their own 26 yard line. Dylan Smith, their captain's gone all the way. Had a tough time of it today, though. Whether running or passing. They give it off. Duncan bounces his way outside. And he finds some running room. Got by Finley. Got out to midfield. Still on his feet. Finally going to be a run out of bounds at about the 40-yard line. That might be the biggest play of the day for the Kansas Jayhawks. It is. They go for 35 yards, but it's one of the only things they've been able to do today because on both sides of the ball, defense and offense, it's been dominated by Nebraska. It has been dominated by Nebraska. And looking at the day in the total, I think the Miami Hurricanes probably are smiling the most. Uh, Oklahoma wins big. Nebraska's winning big. And now it's up to Florida State tonight. How come we didn't see this Nebraska team last week, Swanee? I know Oklahoma's better. but I, I, I think they didn't think there was any question about their success over Oklahoma. And so they went into that ball game without an edge. They were not necessarily overconfident, but they just didn't have the unanswered question in their mind as to whether they'd win, and they played a little lax. Yep. After that first quarter especially, they admitted that to us after the first 14 points. Pick up a 12 there. We pick up John Saunders in New York. John, some trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Smith fires out. Nice catch by Hill. Caught the back of the ball, trying to get to the end zone, and got down to the six-yard line. Harrison Hill showing his hands there as that rifle shot from Smith is good for 21 yards with a run and catch. Hill is a leading receiver coming into the ball game with 33 catches, but he had no touchdowns, and you know he wants to get in here, Swanee. Yeah, he does, but he's on the five-yard line just out to five, and that's not a good place for a wide receiver. Not unless you just want to throw it all the time. They could throw him a little fade right here, but I doubt it. They got first and goal at the Nebraska six. Crowd, of course, doesn't want the Nebraska defense to allow a touchdown. First drops back in that fullback position in front of Coke, and Coke gets the handle. And Deion Booker lets him have it right about at the line of scrimmage. Now, if you're in Nebraska and you're scoring and you're moving the ball up and down the field, you might take an opportunity like this to select one person you want to get into the end zone. But when you're Kansas and you're down, you only have three points on the scoreboard. You can't afford to say, well, you know, I want to try and get the ball to Harrison Hill. You just have to get in the best way you can. Craig Bowl there sending in the play with the gestures on top of his head. Sending in his first line defense, defensive players, too. <laughs> well, the black shirts, the starters, yeah. haven't given up. I don't think a fourth quarter touchdown all year. Eh? They're back in now. They were not in uh, earlier in this drive. Second and goal at the six. Smith's going to throw a fade to Hill in the corner. One hand on it, but he couldn't pull it in. Just a little bit too far outside the outstretched right arm. Yep. It was a good play, but just, you know, well executed. It was just a difficult play to, com to uh, complete. The coverage is good by Craver. When you do this, 
You know, almost sometimes, Swanee, you ought to lean into the guy. Oh, the, I do. To the defensive guy. <laughs> like I'm leaning into you now. <laughs> well, kind of kind of like a basketball, and then, then push off well, at the very and, end. And if you lean into him and you have the hand down and you push off, they'd never call that. Third and goal at the six. Smith running for his life. And now just throws it away. Wants to give himself one more chance as they'll go for it on fourth and goal. It's a good decision. Harrison Hill was the closest guy, but he just threw that out of bounds. And he'll live to play another uh, snap. And no offense. No offense wants to be shut out. I like the fact that Kansas is still going after it. Terry Allen's team is, you know, up against a formidable opponent in Nebraska, but mentally they haven't given up. They keep pushing, keep pushing, trying to make something happen. Terry Allen was in fifth grade the last time Kansas beat Nebraska. His team trails 49 to 3. Fourth and goal at the six. This might be their last chance at the Nebraska end zone. Three wideouts for Smith. Quarterback's going to take off with it. Can he get there? Puts a nice move on and does. Touchdown. Good run by Dylan Smith. Good As move. He would have a great move on at about the three yard line and score. He would have never made it going outside. He had to come back in and he made it. I think that was Deion Booker, number 14. Yep. Yep. He gave him, gave him a little shake and bake. Kind of took his time, measured him, sized him up right here. Boop, boop, boop. And, and goodbye. In the end zone. Six yard touchdown run caps a 74 yard seven play scoring drive. As you said, Kansas has hung in and played as well and as tough as they can. Garcia in for the point after. He had a field goal earlier in the game. High snap, but he got it down, and it's up and good. So with 13-20 remaining in the ball game, Huskers 49 to 10. Near the conclusion of today's game, we'll select the Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. They're shooting T-shirts out of one of those cannons down here, and they almost got Swanee. Came up and hit the glass right in front of us. Joe Walker on the kick return. This has been a weak spot for Nebraska. And that's a good one. Got it out to the 38-yard line. Eric Crouch, if he dropped out of the Heisman uh, in some people's minds last week, he probably has reappeared in some people's thinking. Well, three for three, yeah. 15 yards, a touchdown, and four on the ground. He did all that was necessary. He didn't, you know, he, he, didn't, he could have gone out after the first quarter, but uh, didn't throw but three passes, completed them, and one was for a touchdown, and did what he did running the football team. You could see the focus on him this week when we were at practice and chatting with him yesterday. And uh, they weren't wrong about knowing that their teammates were ready to play. Lord, nice play fake. Going to throw it out. Got it to Davies, a fullback. Judd's on his way. Down inside the 40 to the 35-yard line. The big fella goes. Quincy Rowe finally drags him down, but it's a pickup of 27. They really, like, they really like this fullback, the backup fullback, Davies. They think he is going to be good. Miller, the starter, graduates, and uh, Davies is a redshirt freshman. Lord does a nice job. Good job of throwing on the run. A fullback that can catch and weighs 260 pounds. And block. There you go. Pretty good moves <laughs> on that one, too. And he had no intention of running out of bounds. I know. <laughs> At the 35. Diedrich got about four. Talked about the people that are still in contention for the Heisman. Not that it's down just exclusively to this group, but this is the cream of the crop as far as we're concerned anyway. And Heupel, again, had a three-touchdown running, uh, three-touchdown throwing, one touchdown on the ground today. Yeah, these numbers are going into the day. Drew Brees was idle. Chris Wanky plays tonight. Michael Vick had a tough day today in what little action he did see. And, and Vick has a slew of touchdowns running the ball, too. Yep. Here's Lord on the ground. With Danian Tomlinson in there. I got a question for you guys. Could I, have got been an a, I got an answer. I don't know if it's a good one. But. I, I know you know the answer, then I got a, uh, something. This could be the Aflac trivia question. Give a, give a pause so all of our listeners out there and our viewers can think about this. <laughs> the oldest Heisman Trophy winner ever. How old was the oldest Heisman Trophy winner, and who was it? Now, just pause, guy. I know you know it. Just let our viewers think about that, Stu. Then I got another question for you. All right. 
Okay, I can't wait any longer. <laughs> oh, you want us to say? <laughs> no, I'm giving them, yeah. Who is it? You know it is. Uh, Billy Sims, right? And how old was he? 23. He was close to 23, or 23. maybe he was 23. Little, little over 23. Now, here comes my question. Here comes Deeper for the 14. One of the five guys that we showed on that graphic up for the Heisman is Chris Winkie. Yep. He's 28 years old. Should that make a difference? Should that enter into the voting to all the Heisman voters around the country? The fact that he's 28 years old. Probably shouldn't, but I think it's going to enter everybody's consciousness because it's crossed my mind and we're all voters and I've thought about it. So. Yep. But it really should not. He's executed, played a great game, and there's nothing that says just because you're 28 means you're going to be a smarter quarterback. Humble, yeah. great. But is it Back fair? It. But is it fair to the younger guys uh, that are 21 and 22 that are competing for the same award to compete with somebody that's so much more mature and everything else? That is a good question. I think it's fair because they're playing the same amount of football. Chris Winkie wasn't out playing football some other place for three or four years. He was playing baseball. Yeah. And you know, we've done their games, and he is much more mature. Very, very much. He's almost like a coach. He is a coach on the field. Mm -hmm. And uh, to, but to compare him to, to the hypos, and although Drew Brees is very mature, and some of these other guys that we've seen, uh, Michael Vick, there's no question that uh, that uh, Winky has an advantage. But I, I think it will enter into some of the minds of some of these voters. But uh, I hope it doesn't make any difference. I thought what you were going to ask is who felt the oldest when they won it. I was going to say Paul Horning. <laughs> I've been in the same places with him a few times. <laughs> Loss on the play. Well, here's another question. Now, you know, there was a little poll taken, and, and uh, Josh Heupel has come from nowhere. Right. Is there any, has there been any other Heisman Trophy winners that have won this thing that have come from out of nowhere? I mean, just were off the charts, and their team did great. And they came up and, and won the trophy. I don't recall Eddie George being highly touted before he started his season. Yep. And he won the Heisman. Yep. He had a great game in the kickoff classic, and that seemed to catapult him for the season. Jamal Lord's got a man to throw back to. Diedrich's wide open. His safety valve on the far side, and he's dragged down at the 10 yard line. How about uh, how about Notre Dame? At John Hewitt. John Hewitt, yeah. That, that'd be a good one. Yeah. I mean, he, he kind of came out of nowhere, and uh, I think it had to do a lot with his team. And, uh, and Oklahoma has certainly been one of the true surprises of the year. Yeah, they, they've been so good. I, I think that the, the Bob Stoops and his success at Oklahoma puts a lot of pressure on a lot of coaches, even a coach like Terry Allen, because he comes in in two years, and look, his team is ranked number one. Allen's been here at Kansas for four years, and, you know, they're trying to get the program and move it up. And... You know, Bob Stoops is a miracle <laughs> having his team where it is They're doing a great in job. two years. Great job. Fourth down and five. They see the play clock. They're going to have to hustle. Just got it off. Lord fires. Great catch on the sideline. First and goal. John Gibson drags it in. Well, how did he keep his foot in bounds? It's almost like he grew an extra leg. He sacrificed. An extra three feet. He sacrificed. That's right. He, he lay out. He sacrificed his body. You they go out there. Wide receivers, when they get in this situation, they can't think about when they hit the ground. They just got to stretch out, get that foot in, and don't worry about it. Hang on to the football. You see so many of the young kids not do what he does. Look at the height he gets there and the awareness he has. First and goal now for the Huskers at the three. Diedrich the eye back, but it's the fullback Davies blasting his way in for the touchdown. Judd Davies, the big fella that Bob just talked about a couple of minutes ago, finds the end zone again, and it's 55 to 10. I want to sing that song, Rawhide, rolling, rolling, rolling. <laughs> Keeping them doggies rolling. Brown for the point after. It's up and good with 9-14 remaining in the ball game. The Cornhuskers play in Nebraska football. Now some of the big eaters can take the pads off. The day is done. 56 to 10. Riola says, man, that feels better. The thing is so tight. Kickoff goes in the end zone. Kansas will work from the 20. Bad news for the Big 12 opponents. Uh, three of those guys in an offensive line are back, including Riola and Finotti. 
Collett. Jason Jobes, our roving photographer, gets out and sees the country. Jason does, doesn't he? And you know what he said? I asked, I told him, I said, Jason, you got some great uh, some shots this week. And he says, you know where they're the best, though? He says at Purdue. <laughs> so you don't have to go far, and you know they're good shots. You know what he tells Swanee? You know where they're the best? No, no, he didn't USC. say that. He yeah, didn't yeah. say that. Yeah, but we're not getting to the West Coast to see that sun sink into the Pacific Ocean. That's uh, true. I'd just like to see it sink uh, down by the Monongahela and the Allegheny. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, the sun is setting on Kansas Day. They're going to become another Nebraska victim for the 32nd straight time. With eight and a half minutes left, second down, 14. Dylan Smith still trying to dial up another touchdown. And we're going to have a flag. Yep, flies in. DeJuan Gross got tangled up with J.T. Thompson out there. And that'll be either a holding or a pass interference. This will give Kansas a first down. There's a pass interference penalty with 821 left. Well, we've got a quick moment here. Let's check in with John Saunders in New York. John, down Michigan gave up 259 yards to one guy. Wow. And a lot of football left in that one. He had 176, I think I saw, before halftime. And today, a lot of points for this Nebraska team. Look at the scoring drives, all touchdowns as they traveled various lengths, including three drives of 80 or more. The only thing more dominant than the Nebraska football team in the state of Nebraska at this moment <laughs> might be the lead that uh, Dr. Tom Osborne has in, in his, his run for Congress. In his run for Congress. Yeah. <laughs> the poll said he's got about 80%. <laughs> They call him man. He's running against the other guy. <laughs> Second down at six. Knowing Tom, he probably wants to get every vote. Uh huh. Juan Gross on the coverage out there, and it's going to bring up a third down. And our first and ten presented by Pacific Life. They got to get to the. Almost the 37 yard line for a first down. You know, we showed you that graphic. Nebraska has scored on every possession except one today. Scored a touchdown on every possession. And the only one they didn't score on, they fumbled. You saw Dylan Smith come out and Zach Dyer, redshirt freshman, is in his spot. Play fake. He's going to take off with it. He's going to get the first down. Got in the open field, tripped on his own, but he got the first down. Pick up a seven. We, we know the most important thing about dominating the team is the scoreboard. But how about the fact that Nebraska hasn't punted it one time today? Yeah, that's phenomenal. Yeah. Terry, Terry Allen. Allen. Hey, Northern Iowa. Tell me who these, uh, who, who the most famous quarterback he ever coached. Hmm. You've got a lot of questions. How about Kurt Warner? Huh? Guy coached that Kurt Warner his senior that year. That would be good, absolutely. Yeah. And the guy that played ahead of Kurt Warner for two years is the quarterback coach, Jay Johnson. It's on the staff here coaching the quarterbacks here for Terry Allen. Kurt Warner. That's something else. Well, well, how come he wasn't that good when he played there? Well, I was talking, <laughs> I was talking to Terry about him after before the ball game. And he said, uh, he said uh, Jay Johnson, who was a... Uh, Playing at the time was a little brighter, picked things up a little quicker, uh, just because uh, Kurt was uh, a, a new guy. But he says, as far as throwing the football, he said Kurt could throw it better than anybody they had. Terry was a good quarterback himself for you and I in the uh, the early and mid 70s in the North Central Conference. A lot of his coaches are from that league, or played, or coached at you and I. Here's Duncan, and he's got a first down out near the 49-yard line. Six and a half minutes remaining in the ball game in front of a record crowd in Lincoln, Nebraska Memorial Stadium. It has been all Nebraska in this football game as all their scoring drives are touchdowns. As Lynn Swan mentioned a moment ago, they have not had to punt, which is a rarity. And they lead 56 to 10. Duncan now has 85 yards. Penalty in for Winbush, who was hurt early in the ballgame, tried to play through that ankle sprain and just couldn't do it. And it's Duncan again for a couple. Duncan on the carry. 
As you see, Oklahoma rolled big today, 56 to 7. Very similar score of what we have here. And Josh Heupel, a three touchdown passing, one running day on a 21 of 29 performance. Miami beat Virginia Tech. The Hokies fall from the unbeaten ranks. Miami will move up in the BCS and in the national polls. I mentioned Clemson and Florida State's on ESPN tonight. And that'll be a good one. Florida handily over Vanderbilt. Some of the other scores from around the top 20. Throw down complete to Thompson. Puts the brakes on. And he got down to the 20-yard line. J.T. Thompson, true freshman. That was a great adjustment on the ball. A pickup of 30. That's the, that's the offensive philosophy they came into the game with, and they're finishing it this way, and that is throw it up on the corners. That's Ricketts, number 28. He's about the fifth or sixth defensive uh, corner that they play out there, but like the other corners, he doesn't play it very well. Doesn't see the ball, and if you don't see the ball, then go ahead and throw it. Kansas knew coming in they had to win two of their final three to get in the bowl picture and they knew this would be a tough one if at all having a chance and they've still got Texas left but I'll tell you what they're not quitting at all throw down complete to the tight end Adrian Jones Well, Nebraska had to win two of the last last three games to get into the bowl get into the uh, Big 12 championship game as long as one of the wins was next week against Kansas, Kansas State. State right that's the key one and Kansas State won big today over Iowa State. Oak Stein's talking to the fans. That's the kind of day you can have when you're ahead. Uh, he had a, had a young girl, a little kid, taking a picture with her. I thought he was running for an office. <laughs> That's good. I like that. And Matt Davison. You know, Polk, I was talking to Polk, Carlos Polk and Alexander during practice on Thursday, and they were kidding around, and they were talking about wrestling. As you mentioned, Alexander was champion in Missouri. And they told this story about wrestling each other one day, and, and there were different versions. Alexander said he body slammed Polk. Uh -huh. Polk said you didn't. <laughs> and I said, you know, well, depending on how you guys play, will will dictate what version of the story I tell. All I can tell you today, folks, is the way that that young man played and Alexander played, it was a draw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want to get in the middle of that one. No. Even if you're wearing stripes. First and 10, just inside the 11-yard line for Kansas. And it's Duncan. Duncan got on the corner and dragging people down to the two-yard line. Tough run. And Duncan might be on his way to a 100-yard day. He's got 95. 4.30 to go. Speaking of Carlos Polk, he was definitely involved today from the very get-go in this one. Put a lot of pressure on the quarterback, whether he was running or throwing. And he always puts pressure on opposing running backs as well. And the Butkus candidate, he played like it today. As coach said, he had to step up and play. They featured him in the defensive attack, and he did not let anyone down. No, he didn't. Second down and two. Dyer, long count, giving it off. Duncan bounces off and in for the touchdown. Good job by Reggie Duncan. Good. Uh, forced by the offensive line, not giving up. You know, if you can take something out of this, and it's been, uh, you know, Terry Allen's only been in this series for the last four years. But, uh, you know, it's, Kansas has not beaten Nebraska for... 31 years, but he can take something home out of this. It's that you never gave up. Yep. Joe Garcia for the point after. Trying to cap off the 80 yard drive. Does 12 play March, a little over five minutes. Good looking drive. Kansas not quitting, but they're in a hole 56 17. We've got 357 remaining in this one as darkness covers. Memorial Stadium. Whoops, that hit one of the up guys. Got to get on it, and Nebraska does. I think it might have been a tight end. John Penny is the guy that uh, covered it. So Nebraska takes over with a 56 17 lead. About to go to 8 and 1, 5 and 1 in conference play. Setting up their showdown with Kansas State next week. And it's Colorado on Thanksgiving weekend. And then maybe the Big 12 championship. 
Today our Chevrolet players of the game. I don't know if Dominic knows that he's high, he's high five on all his buddies. As Dominic Riola, it says Eric Crouch there. It is not Eric Crouch. Dominic Riola is our player of the game for Nebraska. Carl Neesmith had 19 tackles for Kansas. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a thousand dollar contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Way to go, Dominic. We would have given it to the entire offensive line for Nebraska, but there's not a Chevrolet in the world that would hold those guys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if you get a pickup, doesn't matter. And uh, I'll, t I'll tell you what was a scary sight. He's a he's a nice guy, great smile. Watch him Thursday with a pair of white tights on in practice. Yeah, that was scary. <laughs> he looked like the biggest ballerina you ever seen in your life. They were bound there. The entire line dances around like a, a dancing bears. They bounce around. They're very light on their feet. And uh, Carl Neesmith, great job with all the tackles. Excellent job. He and Marcus Rogers and Chaz Murphy were in on a whole bunch of hits for Kansas as they had to be. But Riola and company part of a 430-plus day on the ground rushing. And the rushes are still coming. Thunder Collins is doing it now as he picks up 10. And let's check in with John Saunders. And he's need that one to stay in the Pac-10 hunt with Oregon and Oregon State playing as well as they are. Yeah. You talk about some surprise teams. There's three of them out there in the Pac-10. Washington, Oregon, Oregon State. Yep. The Beavers were winning big the last time I saw again today. And Oregon had a lead on Washington State the last report we had. So Buck Halter, Alexander, and Crouch all with over 100 yards rushing, and that hasn't happened very many times. In fact, the only other time was against Arizona State. Ken Clark, Steve Taylor, and Terry Rogers each had 100 plus 12 years ago. So when Frank Solich told us we're going to get back to Nebraska football and ground it out, he was not kidding us at all. 78 plays today for Nebraska. 70 of them were runs. Next set. Brent Lindstrom is in at quarterback right now for Nebraska. And the pitch to Thunder Collins who slips, tries to keep his footing. And he'll go down just a little bit short of the first down. So now Nebraska can refocus again. That's what they had to do after their first loss to get ready for this one. They didn't want to overlook Kansas. They didn't. They dominated from the get go. And now they got Kansas State next week. And that is a vital game to them as on far as trying to stay in the hunt for the Big 12. On the road. Mm -hmm. Going to Manhattan's not going to be easy. Well, they Kansas State beat them there a couple years ago for the first time in forever. Yep, that's right. But the important thing today is that Nebraska got their hedge on right. You know, they got the game. They, they, they played their style. They dominated this team. And they did it at the beginning. And they did it all the way through the ballgame to the end. Kind of days that make homecoming kind of easy. You don't have to sit there and have an upset stomach throughout the game whether or not your team's going to survive. It's good if you're the home team. That's if you're right. The visiting team. Yeah, then you're the homecoming queen. <laughs> Here's a give. Well, the frog prince. That's right. Inside, everybody getting in the act now as Matt Albertson gets a carry. Eric Crouch, precision extraordinaire today, and both on the ground and in the air. And we're down to the final 30 seconds. Everybody can smile now. Two more big ones, and then the biggest of all, if they could get the rematch with Oklahoma, that's what everybody is hoping or looking for. Under Collins into the secondary, almost took it the distance. Got it down to the 12-yard line. Bryant brought him down a pick up of 17. Thunder showing what everybody had hoped to see from him. Highly touted as he came into the program. Frank Solich took a lot of heat this week for the Oklahoma game. I think the heat's off. Coach, you can smile too. Well, I think they all came away with some respect for Oklahoma, and I think they don't want to play him this week, but in a few weeks, I think they'd like to get him again. So it's Nebraska, a big winner. The number six team in the country, number four of the BCS, certainly didn't hurt their standing. 56 to 17, they win it. That's going to wrap it up for Memorial Stadium on this homecoming for Lynn Swan and Bob Greasy. I'm Brad Nessler for our ABC crew from Lincoln, Nebraska. 56 17, the final. John Saunders and Terry Bowden are standing by. Good night from Lincoln.